six is almost finished. We have Monday Night Football on tap here in just about an hour. Uh, this is the only playbook. I'm Sweetcar. Got Show Chauvet, episode twelve. How are we doing Monday, folks? Scared. <laughs> Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's looming, man. If he scores twenty seven points, I'm out. Yeah, if Diggs gives me thirteen points, I'm out, which is probably going to happen. If Derrick Henry gets four points, I'm out. So I like my chances <laughs> there. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Again, we're the only playbook. Um, recapping, uh, going over everything that happened Sunday. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Monday night that's on tap here in an hour. Um, first things first, social media. We absolutely appreciate everybody that's been involved, engaged. Um, again, that's really why we do what we do. Um, subscribing, liking, all that not only helps us, but it also puts the podcast out to more people that don't come across it naturally, organically. So we want to spread the word. We want to spread the news. Uh, everybody that's engaged with us so far, uh, we couldn't be happier. We couldn't be uh, more grateful, and we encourage more of it. And, you know, as a uh, thank you, we, we want to basically do this and, and, and hope that uh, we're able to give back, and this is something we can continue doing. But the first three people to subscribe to our YouTube channel following listening to this episode, uh, YouTube channel, The Only Playbook, uh, we will go ahead and send a Starbucks gift card to. So as a way to show our token of appreciation with how far we've come six weeks into doing this mm-hmm. um, and everybody that's supported us, uh, given us feedback, encouraged us along the way. So we wouldn't be here with a lot yeah. of people, without a lot Free of people. Free Starbucks? Hell yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, uh, Can I you... get in on this? <laughs> so I'll, buy, I'll buy you Starbucks. So <laughs> when they uh, subscribe, they're going to go ahead and DM us on Instagram or Twitter. So when you subscribe, go ahead and DM us right away and then we know who did that. Yep. At, on Instagram, it's the only playbook. At Twitter, it's at only playbook. So DM us on either one when you subscribe to our YouTube channel at the only playbook and you'll get a Starbucks gift card as a token of our appreciation. Enjoy some hot or cold coffee. Um, so again, thank you guys so much. Again, this we wouldn't be here doing it as much as we have up until six weeks without you guys. So uh, keep that coming. That helps us be able to put out more and more content to help you guys. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's jump right into this episode. First things first, again, we always like to give a rundown. Week six just took place yesterday. Again, another slew of injuries, Mm -hmm. running backs going down. This is the meat of the season for fantasy football. So, so many implications. Show medical man, kick us off. All right, um, so I'm going to mainly talk about the injuries, injury updates from today, so it's the latest stuff. Um, and then for the rest of them, obviously, go on our Twitter page. We're going to be rapid-firing there shortly, tomorrow. Um, but as far as today, here's some uh, people that you may have forgotten about. Uh, Michael Gallup, calf injury. He's been on the IR. Uh, McCarthy said today that he hopefully he can resume practice. <laughs> so, if you know, if you're um, – he may return against the Vikings <laughs> October 31st. Yeah, um, so this isn't so much about Michael Gallup. It's more about the other receivers. Uh, You know, the targets are going to go down. Uh, Maybe not as drastically, but they will go down. So if there's, you know, trade offers, whatever, if you can pick up like a solid player for these guys, like, you know, C.D. Lamb, I think, will be fine. Cooper, I'm a little worried about. He's been worrying. He's been dealing with injuries all year, and he basically has this one route to get him his points, <laughs> just down the sideline for like a 40-yard bomb, pretty much every game. So if he doesn't get that, you're stuck with four points. If he gets that, you get 14 points. So you know, if you if you're like if you like that, go ahead, stick with him. If you don't, Gallup's coming in. Cooper's targets might decrease. You might want to get rid of him. Uh, AJ Brown playing tonight, questionable with illness. Oh is available for tonight. So he's it's not COVID. Okay. So they can't rule him out specific, uh, specifically because of COVID, but he's available tonight. He is on another snap count. So if Jeez. you're – Yeah, so um, they probably won't listen to this until the game's over, which is unfortunate <laughs> because a lot of people are going to be starting him. Uh, he might get, grab you a touchdown, but the targets won't be as heavy as you expect. Yeah. Um, Baker Mayfield, uh, he's getting a second opinion on his sh- left shoulder. He had a torn labrum he was dealing with all year, and he subluxed his shoulder – because uh, of J.J. Watt, right? Um, so he saw a doctor. Uh, now he's getting a second opinion on the shoulder to see if he should play at all. But apparently, he's under the impression he's starting Thursday Night Football. Yeah. This that, is such a quick turnaround. Yeah, classic Baker Mayfield mentality. Yeah. Um, he's so, got a sling on saying he's right. going to play. Which right. you can appreciate, right? The yeah. tenacity yeah. and yeah. the attitude. I mean, if it, if it was my quarterback and yeah. my team, I would want him to say similar yeah. things. So, yeah, he's he's trying to start, but... From a medical standpoint, there is absolutely no way I would be putting that guy out there. My franchise quarterback, one more fall on that shoulder, could never play again. So, you know, just you, you can hear all this stuff wherever you hear, but here on the only podcast, he's not going to be playing this game. Yep. Uh, Jerry Judy, 
chances of playing less than 50%, but he is back at practice limited. So, you know, signs are good for Jerry Judy there. I don't know how much, you know, he'll really do it, make a big difference with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback, but people that have Jerry Judy stock signs are looking up finally. Uh, Paris Campbell's injury is significant. He will miss time. So that helps out the other receivers. Um, the Colts have T.Y. Hilton came into the picture and left very quickly as predicted. Flashes of ama- like flashes of old school T.Y. though. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. was so fired up with his catches. Dude, yeah. Three catches for like 60 something yards to start off the yeah. game. You know, like he, he was back doing what T.Y. does. And then it was a non-contact injury he suffered while running full speed. So that makes you wonder what is actually going on. Apparently, it's a soft tissue injury, which isn't always a good thing or a bad thing because we don't know exactly what it is. But we need like 48 hours for that inflammation to go down to see if he can actually run on it. So stay tuned for updates on that. Uh, Alex Collins took big hits late in this game last night. Uh, you saw Travis Homer come in at the end, and you're like, "What? why is he in? You know? Uh, so Alex Collins taking those hits. It's nothing serious, but it's enough for him to be in pain. Um, and Rashard Penny is coming back. He's fully healthy, apparently. He's fully healthy, so he will be coming back to get that starting job, especially because Carson's out on the IR. So Alex Collins' time may be limited. He will have to play this next game uh, to not be just eliminated from this picture completely. Um, but yeah, so Alex Collins, huge pickup last week for whoever started him. This week, I would not make him my number one priority because there's a lot of confusion here. Uh, Antonio Gibson. I would just, I, I could, if I could go back in time, I would just not draft this guy. Yeah, I'm so angry. I would have just gotten Montgomery and taken those couple of it, this, the obvious out versus these like doesn't even know how to play anymore because of his pain. I, it's just so frustrating. Um, he had an MRI today. Uh, it's not looking that good apparently, but I don't know what that exactly means because he's got a stress fracture, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe it's worse. I don't know, but um, overall, this is not a good looking picture for your second overall running back. Um, so, yeah, it's time to trade him. It's time to trade him. Like, he needs to be on everybody's hot seat and get him out of there as soon as you can. Because J.D. McKissick is looking fantastic. He's, dude, he looks electric when right. he touches the football. Right. And now he's getting carries. Dude, I think the limiting factor for him is his size, yeah. right? He can get killed by a linebacker. Yeah, right. But they can't catch him. Nope. You know, he's running these wheel routes. And, like, he's he's a great running back. He's a great running back. Yeah. So, um, you know, look for him. Antonio Gibson owners, if you don't want to get rid of him completely – uh, you need to find a way to get J.D. McKissick on your team. Otherwise, you are going to be crying because you're not going to make the playoffs. Um, also, if your fantasy team's not getting better, you know, if you're just sitting there hoping for people to come back and you're not doing anything about it, if your team's not getting better, there's other teams that are getting better. Yep. So you're like, you're, <laughs> what are you doing, bro? Like, things have to be happening. This is week six, week seven. You got to be the ones to make the difference for your team to have a chance. And if you're just sitting there with injuries piled up and just players that are not playing that could be useful to get rid of, this is the time. This is the time to do that. Yeah. Don't hold on to people just because you drafted them and you're like still waiting for them to come around. Right. Six weeks in, if they're not showing, like in Odell Beckham, right. if they're not showing that there's any viability fantasy wise, they just become a name on your yeah. roster and a waste yeah. of space. Right. If you don't want to drop them because yeah. it's like emotional ties or whatever, fine. But you got to find a way to get rid of them. You got to get some value for this. Yeah. Uh, Nick Chubb, calf injury. Was ruled out this last game. He is not ruled out for Thursday Night Football. <laughs> they're keeping all their cards on the table, I feel like. It's yeah. Like a- yeah, that, that, I mean, it's a smart thing to yeah, do, right? Smart absolutely. thing to do. Uh, but it's not as obvious as a Kareem Hunt calf injury. It's pretty safe to say he's out for four to six weeks. That's my opinion. I haven't heard anything exactly about how long Kareem Hunt's out, but I would guess he's not going to play for a month, guaranteed. Um, Calvin Ridley will return to practice this week, so that's some good signs. But also the other wide receiver, what was his name? Uh, the Falcons receiver. Uh that tells you everything you need yeah, to know. Yeah, like a bunch of uh, not, names. Not Pitts. Not, not Pitts. Zacharias. Um, I, no, it wasn't him. It was a pretty good name. It's, you know, it's not a well-known name, but it's like not in Patterson. the fantasy world. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think it starts with an H. I don't know. I don't. I forgot. That's Man, okay. that's crazy. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, look it up while I do yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Calvin Ridley returned to practice. So did that guy. So, um, you know, it's great for Calvin Ridley owners. Um, you know, you're probably going to be starting him here shortly. Uh, Damian Williams is still on the COVID Russell list. Russell Gage? Russell Gage. Okay. Mm-hmm. Russell Gage back. Yep. Uh, so Damian Williams is still on the COVID list as of today. So I don't know what's going on. Like, maybe he why has, is he yeah. still testing positive? Um, He's vaccinated, right? Is okay. he? I, I, I don't know his medical history like <laughs> that. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, that's what I was going to ask. Is, is he, does he actually have COVID and was unvaxxed? Or Wait, is he, if the unvaxxed player gets COVID, the whole team is eliminated from playing the game or something weird like that, right? What? 
No way. No, no, that's that was my concern with Kirk Cousins this uh, whole time. But I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll dabble onto yeah. that later and figure this out. Twitter, exactly. only playbook. But yeah, Damian Williams is still on the COVID list today, which is a little bit longer than expected. You would have expected some neg- negative tests by now, but this is good for owners that just saw Herbert out there. Um, so we'll see. Keep an eye out on this. I'm pretty sure Damian Williams will probably test negative by this upcoming game, but that doesn't mean he's an immediate start because Herbert has been playing lights out. And he got more carries than Damian Williams when he didn't have COVID. So, yeah, uh, keep these injuries in mind, especially that A.J. Brown one tonight. Unfortunately, you guys won't hear it. <laughs> but um, We should literally tweet that out, right? Yeah. Do we tweet that out? Actually, already? yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll okay. do that right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's the injuries that are relevant at this moment. The other ones, there's still a couple of other ones, but I don't want to say the wrong thing or give you the wrong idea of what's going to happen. So these are the ones I feel pretty confident about what's going to go down. The other ones will be tweeting as the as the injury reports come in. At Only Playbook on Twitter. Again, if you're not following us or turning your notifications on even, you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, so that's the slew of injuries. Again, we hate injuries. You want guys to be healthy and you want teams to be maximizing their potential, but this is the nature of the beast that is the NFL, and this is where people that you know are smart in fantasy, that play the waiver wire, that don't just rest on their laurels of their drafted team, right. these are where those teams start to make jumps and make a name for themselves and get back in the playoff picture or solidify themselves even further. So... Uh, these are big, big names that have huge fantasy implications. Absolutely. And you can't always count that the players have the handcuffs. Right. I mean, they might be available. Um, you know, like guys like McKissick yep. could be available as well. And so you definitely need to look out for, for these guys when they mm-hmm. get the start. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, jumping into the big, big slate of games on Sunday, we'll start us off with the game in London. The Miami Dolphins and the Jacksonville Jaguars traveled to London, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Another marquee game for our London overseas fans. But um, this ended up being a good game. Jags came in 0-5, searching for their first victory, and they pick it up 23-20 final. Jags covered the three-point spread. They were three-point dogs, and the under comes in at 47. Finally get that monkey off your back, Urban Meyer, Trevor Lawrence, that entire team gets that first victory. We talked about the fact that we thought this was going to be their spot because the Dolphins, I mean, you get Tua back, but I don't know, man. We'll talk more about Tua, but I I need to get people's thoughts on Tua. Like, is this guy the future? I mean, as of right now, I think that's what the Dolphins are planning on, but these trade requests for, uh, what's his name? Um, Watson. Watson are coming in hot. Yeah. And now I even hear reports that the Eagles yeah. might be trying to get Sheesh. Watson because they have a lot of picks coming up here. Yep. So why not, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, Tua, you know, I was never a fan of Tua. Never a fan of Tua, especially because one of my friends, his brother was Mac Jones and he was playing in behind Tua. So my whole life, <laughs> ever since knowing about Tua, I was like, I can't wait till You're Tua You're rooting against playing. him. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, his mechanics, I don't like. Don't He's, like him. You know, like, it's just a weird guy. So one thing, I was listening to a podcast earlier, and it's so spot on because I was trying to assess why Tua on like the eye test doesn't attract me. Uh-huh. And he, this guy brought up a really good point. Is And it's even worse to me. Like Ryan Fitzpatrick was a good comparison, right? When Ryan Fitzpatrick throws the ball, no matter where he throws, it looks like he threw it as literally as hard as he could. Like he put all of his arm strength into it. And that to me is literally Tua. Tua looks like he's throwing as hard as he possibly can every time he throws it. Mm-hmm. But the one thing to relax is arm strength. So you just see that he's tr- maximizing. Whereas you have guys like Mahomes who can just flick right. the ball 50 yards, yeah. like long-term that's got to put stress on your shoulder and mm-hmm. your arm. Right. Mm-hmm. And everything to a does just is very, very underwhelming, very underwhelming. And like he had to throw the ball 40, 47 times. Yes. He had 33 completions for 329 yards, ended up throwing two touchdowns. One it's the Jags defense and two, 33 completions to get, you know, 329 yards versus a guy that can throw like Josh Allen can complete the ball 16 times and get 350 yards, you know? So the, the underneath stuff, the inefficiency of like going over the top, you have Jalen Waddle, um, you had a chance to beat the Jaguars with a guy who they brought back in Tua, who they claim is the quarterback of the future. He gets his first start after coming back from injury and they lose to an 0 and 5 Jags team. Yeah. So in terms of the eye test, Tua doesn't look good. But uh, as far as like just some numbers to think about when you're when you're talking about Tua, he has one of the quickest release in the NFL. His average release uh, was uh, I think this was on uh, college college stats, so point mm-hmm. three three, mm-hmm. where the average is point three nine okay. seconds, right? Okay. Um, so he's got the quickest release. However, like you mentioned, it seems like he's trying to throw the ball so hard. His maximum launch velocity is fifty three point five. Or the average is 57 and a half. Okay. Right. For, for comparison, yep. like uh, Josh Allen, who's 
the highest in the maximum launch velocity, 63 miles per hour. So the guy can't, he's just not able to put enough strength in it, but it's a quick release and that's what's been his way of his strength. And uh, that's his MO. Just not sure if that's going to cut it in the NFL if you don't have uh, strength. Spot on because, again, Alabama did a great job of pre-snap reads for their quarterbacks where the quarterback knows exactly where the ball is going to go before they even hike the ball, right? And they realize that that's to a strength. And so they're like first read to a he, three step drop. His first read is where he's throwing. Right. Well, defenses will figure that out. You can't make a living as a quarterback only throwing to your first read. Mm-hmm. And exactly that is he just takes the check downs when he immediately sees them, doesn't let the play develop, doesn't progress beyond the first read. Mm-hmm. And that hinders them. They could have easily beat the Jacks. The Jags are not a good football team, but that you get your starting quarterback back and they lose to an 0-5 team. It's just like in your mind, you're like, where do you go from there? You put your franchise quarterback back on the field healthy to be like, let's bounce back. Let's beat Let's beat a team that hasn't won yet and you lose. And so, I don't know, like let's give some credit to the Jags, right? Trevor Lawrence is, again, every single week starting to get pro- progressively better. That throw to Marvin Jones in the end zone was like a really, really good throw from a rookie quarterback, maybe not even from a rookie, from any quarterback, a really, really good throw. Um Again, they're not feeding James Robinson enough, but he still had 73 yards and got a touchdown. Give the guy the ball more. Um, and got, I, James Robinson now has a touchdown in four straight games, which is the longest streak by a Jaguars player since Maurice Jones drew wow. in 2009. So they, they found their running back. Yep. I think now there's just zero argument nope. about who else is going to get the ball in the backfield. It's just going to be Robinson. Yeah. Also, uh, huge credit to Jaguars defense. Uh, they've allowed 22 or more points in 20 straight games. They've lost every single one of those games. That was the worst streak in NFL history. Yep. Now, they allowed 20 points. They allowed 20 points. They won the game. The streak is snapped. 20-game losing streak, man. Again, that that's... I feel so good for the Jags, even though like there's a lot of question marks with Urban Meyer and his fit and not, but Trevor Lawrence, man, I just wanted the guy to get a win under his belt because yeah. yeah. every week you don't get your first win. I just feel like that much more pressure gets added on. So, uh, again, Jags take care of this one in London. Gasecki was a bright spot for the Miami Dolphins. Eight catches, 115 yards. Right. And Waddle as well. Waddle. Two Waddle. touchdowns. Right. Two touchdowns, 10, uh, 10 catches, 70 yards. Uh, so big day for him. Not the, not a great day for <laughs> Miles Gaskin. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, One day, you we, know. We need, to, we need to have a segment where we just throw people into the basement. Yeah. <laughs> and throughout the uh, season, we're just going to start taking one player a week who we're just like, all right. Stop having faith in this guy. It's not because he lacks in talent. It's because of everything around him. It's, they're just, it's just not going to happen. You'll yep. get a game. You can be excited about that one game out of five games if you started him, but you're going to lose those other four weeks that you started him because of the same reason. Yeah, so. I mean, this is the definition of running back RBBC, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Malcolm Brown, five carries, Sal- Salvin Ahmed, seven, and then Miles Gaskin, with five. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he didn't average really well either, 1.8 yards uh, per carry. So that kind of... This, you know, yeah, p- it, puts you back a little bit. It's tough because, yes, sometimes spell running backs get like bigger yard chunks because they come in and they're they're not like the general role of, of the running back, right? Mm-hmm. Of the starting running back. But at the same time, a lot of running backs need to get going. So if you're only giving a guy five freaking touches, carries, he's never getting going. He's right. never getting into the flow of the game. And it just is a disservice to him. So at this point, dude, trade Miles Gaskin from the Dolphins. There's got to be another team that could use a running back. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's clearly capable. Like, even if he's not, he hasn't gotten enough sample size to like, get shunned like the way he is mm-hmm. i want to see him with 20 25 carries a game and see what he yep. can do yeah. yeah real quick on the jaguars uh so believe it or not week six that is the first field goal that the jaguars kicker made this year oh wow Damn. i'm i'm ba- <laughs> i did not know that i'm absolutely like he's well, attempted kicks and missed or he's never yeah attempted. so there's been three attempted kicks this whole game so this is the new kicker uh, oh yeah. okay okay matthew, uh, but Ma- the, matthew right but the yeah matthew right but um I, I don't remember the name of the previous kicker but he had Lambo. not Lambo, Lambo had not made a field goal prior to this game oh for three Oh, you're talking about this year? This year. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind. That's not Lambo. But hey, here's more piggybacking stats on the kicker. Okay. So Matthew Wright became the first kicker since 1991 to make multiple field goals of 50 or more yards in the last four minutes of the fourth quarter of a single game. Wow. Impressive. Can you, can you even like 
Ju- you're telling me Justin Tucker hasn't done that? This guy was picked up off the street, bro. Like that. Imagine how exciting it is. He made the game-winning fucking kick in London. Yeah, the game tying kick. Did you see that kick? Yeah, yeah. it was a curveball, dude. Yeah, that was sick. That there was so much draw on that. In me, I think everybody, even the announcer, yeah. I forget who it was, but as soon as he kicked it, he said, "Oh, he's no. like, oh no, or oh, he misses it, or he hits it right, and then, dude, that thing just yeah. straight right. falls right back in." It was amazing. It was yeah. amazing. I, I think Ever Meyer was shocked too. Like, yeah. He had his head <laughs> down. You just couldn't believe it. It, but yeah. Very but um, yeah, we've given a lot of love to this Miami and Jacksonville game. We should probably talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is in London. Hey, this is for all you London fans that are listening from overseas, which is probably nobody. But um, nonetheless, Jags pick up their first victory. So let's hope they can get into the bye week, have a victory under the belt, regroup, and maybe catch some momentum. Dolphins are going to be home to the Falcons next week. So one of those teams has to get a win there. Next game on the board was the marquee matchup for this week, but it did not live up to the expectations. The LA Chargers were at the Ravens, two 4 and one teams. Um, man, the Chargers blew this one. The Ravens dominate this game 34-6. to Start to finish, Ravens cover the 2.5-point spread. The under comes in at 52. This game was all Ravens. Yeah, they're running the ball with Devontae Freeman. They're running the ball with Latavius Murray, Le'Veon Bell. They had an even amount of carries. What is this, like 2011, 12? Yeah, yeah <laughs> seriously. Dude, yeah, so they went with their running attack, and we knew how weak the Chargers were on right. defense stopping the run. Yep. They just maximized on what they were supposed to do. You know, Lamar Jackson had to do nothing. Yep. You know, he barely had to do anything for them to win this game. They outright just dominated on every side of the field here. Yeah, fantasy wise, Lamar Jackson didn't have that great a game. I think like eleven point yeah. something yeah, points. Yeah, he, he that, threw two picks. Yeah. yeah, two two picks, and and so didn't have a single touchdown. I don't think either. Yeah, uh, Mark touchdown. Andrews. Andrews. Oh, Andrews. Who, okay, well, who have. did ball out? Uh, yeah. Mark Andrews. My only um, bright spot this week. Yeah, right. So you know, beast mode activated there. So well <laughs> done. Um, he has Mark Andrews has one of the easiest schedules uh, for the for tight ends coming up for, coming up for remaining the season. So. Um, this is why I was trying to trade you, Mark Andrews, but oh, you know, you're smarter than that. You sly devil. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know that stat. Now I will definitely not trade Mark well, Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, good, good spot, good, uh, a bright spot there for uh, Mark Andrew Holders. Uh, Bateman seen six tar- targets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes his debut. Was this de- his debut, right? Yeah. Season debut. Season debut. Looked good. Beat, beat a lot of one-on-one coverage. Made a couple of crucial third down catches, which it was interesting to see Lamar trust him that yeah. r- right away. Mm-hmm. Third down, crucial spots thrown to him. And um, he's yeah. not like the fastest guy, obviously, but he can get separation and he's tall. He's big. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I like the added element because... I trust his hands more than I trust Hollywood Hollywood's hands yeah. at this point because Hollywood's hands are they, awful. They just don't have another big wide receiver. Yep. It's, it's like the Eagles. They just run with these little guys, and then they have Mark and Andrews. tight ends, yeah. Like, what are you doing? You can't win like this. But now I think Bateman's going to stretch the field a little bit more, more goal line targets, uh, not to Mark Andrews' uh, benefit, mm. but as overall as a team for the Ravens, that, I mean, that's what they needed. Yep. That, was, that was that one piece missing on offense, mm-hmm. and they got him. Yeah, and then obviously on the Chargers side of the ball, just an extremely subpar performance, right? Um, the big, the biggest story to me watching this game is Justin Herbert had probably one of the most inaccurate games I've seen to date. Like, his throws were just off. Right. And, you know, Brandon Staley got credited, you know, up until this point because the Chargers were 4-1. and one. Bro, okay, continue. Yeah, they were hitting all the right spot. They were pushing all the right buttons. They were 7-for-7, seven 7-for-8 seven com- seven coming into this game on fourth downs. The only fourth down they didn't convert was... I think you guys remember the Hunter Renfro one where he was the punt returner and he came in and like decked the guy. Yeah. So it's good awareness. But this game, what was that? They what kind of play call was that? For they were they had like a fourth and one or yeah fourth and one at their own nineteen yard line, own nineteen yard line. They're down like eighteen points in the third quarter, and sure it's one yard right. So the statistics and analytics tell you to go give for the it, ball whatever. Sure. But the play calling was so fucking stupid. Like it's fourth down. If you don't get that, the other team is guaranteed three you points. You lost the game, right. Especially because they have Justin Tucker, right? So, like, the three points are absolutely guaranteed. You need to be drawing up your best plays there or throwing it to your best guys. In those spots, I'm looking for, like, a Keenan Allen or I'm looking for, like, an Austin Eckler. I'm sorry, but even at this point, I'm still not throwing the ball to Jared Cook. I'm not throwing the ball to even Mike Williams. you got to get the ball to the guys who have the ability to beat their defender quickly on a quick route, and that's Austin Eckler and Keenan Allen. Right. And the way they drew up these plays were just awful, not to mention Justin Herbert didn't give any of his receivers a chance at half of these balls. Right. Yeah, he's acting like Jared Cook is like the savior. Yeah. You know how many targets were gone? to The pick was on uh, Jared Cook. Yep. The drop was on Jared Cook. All these crucial plays were all Jared Cook. <sighs> yeah, I mean— 
just inaccuracy. That was the, really the key there. But credit to the Ra- Ra- Ravens' defense as well. Yep. Key stops on third down mm-hmm. and the fourth down play yep. as well. So, um, you know, they had the sacks. They had the, the pass deflections when they needed to, too. So it was really hard for the Chargers to get the offensive rolling. I and, mean, you know, you, you do need some uh, completions to kind of see things through. So I'm not sure that this is, like, one of those things where, hey, are the Chargers' offense, like, are they beatable kind of deal? Or is it just not getting the rhythm and – the Ravens having a solid defensive performance. Yeah, I, I I would chalk it up more to an outlier. At least I hope because mm-hmm. we've seen so much firepower from their offense. Um, but like I mentioned last week, the one reason I was worried about the Chargers this game is the Ravens' momentum that they build coming back on that Monday night game against the Colts. We saw Lamar beat you away that he's not traditionally used to beating you. So, man, they rode that momentum straight in here, and they did something again that they they haven't done to beat people, and they just straight ran it down your throat. Right. And Lamar was pretty much a non-factor. Yeah, this game was over before all the other games yep. because of how much the Ravens ran this game. Dude. like the, It was like halftime. The other teams had like six minutes left, and this game was already at halftime. Yeah. So they were just they were playing fundamental Ravens football, and Chargers just did not want to play. No, absolutely. So, again, very big dud for the Chargers. Ravens are now 5-1. and one, um, Look like one of the best teams in the AFC. Yeah. They're going to be at home to the Bengals. That's going to be a good game. Chargers get a much-needed bye, so hopefully Mike Williams can rest up the knee. They can regroup and just chalk this up as a we just kind of forget about this week. Right. Um, jumping right into the Packers, the Packers had a divisional matchup this week against the Bears. They were at Soldier Field. Packers come away with this one victorious, 24-14. to 14. Final, Packers are now 5-1. and one. The Bears are 3-3. Three and three. Packers cover their minus 5-point spread, and the under, actually the over, no, the under came in, sorry. 38 total points, the under was 44. This was a battle of first place. If the Bears had won, they would yep. have been tied and had the uh, tiebreaker yeah. to take sole advantage of first place. This was a big game for Justin Fields, you know, divisional matchup, chance to, you know, win this game. And the game was close for a long time, right? The yep. game was close for a long time. It was within reach for a long time. The biggest difference was obviously usually the same guy that's always the biggest difference, and that's Mr. Aaron Rodgers um, with running in that touchdown to kind of solidify the victory there. But what else did you guys see here? I mean, I there was a 0% chance I was giving the Bears to win this game. I think I mentioned last time the Packers have won 18 of their last 21 games versus the Bears. So Aaron Rodgers does, in fact, own the Bears. He's not wrong with that statement. So, you know, this was just a greedy game that – Sometimes it looked like the Bears were going to do something about it. You know, they ran the ball well with Khalil Herbert, almost 100 yards and a touchdown. Uh, they didn't run the ball with anybody else. Uh, Cole Komet got a carry before uh, another running back got a carry. <laughs> uh, they got Allen Robinson involved, seven targets, four receptions, 53 yards. He caught some That's progress. Plays. Yeah, it's progress. And it, they weren't just easy throws, too. There were some good throws made by uh, Justin Fields. So offensively, Chicago's offense is trending upwards. It just so happens to play against their, like, daddy. So, you know, it just it wasn't going to work out for them. Yep. Yeah, I was closely looking at Justin Fields, and although he did look better than he has before, uh-huh. 16 for 27, 174 yards, one touchdown, I realize he rolls out to the right often, mm-hmm. and he, it seems like he's also holding the ball too long. Oh, that's that's been a big problem for him coming out of college, too. Yeah. He had the luxury at Ohio State, right? Mm-hmm. right. You're literally playing behind every Lineback lineman that can to go to the NFL, NFL. Yeah. and so the dude would have like 13 seconds to throw. But like you said, that's right. not the story in the NFL. Exactly, exactly. You just got to get the ball out. You know, just and that's probably going to come with you know practice and understanding where the players are. He's he's a rookie, so I guess that's understandable. Um, but the ones when he rolls out and he throws it, you know, um, using I, I guess he's kind of like off balance mm-hmm. throwing it one hand, obviously one hand. But uh, it just it's not accurate, right? Like it's going further than the receivers like 10 yards um you know there was no there's no air under his throws is what i was noticing like yeah. on those out routes and those deep routes like he's slinging the ball so he's overthrowing most of those guys he's not putting any touch behind the ball so it's not like dropping in spots so right. it's almost like zone coverage is giving him trouble because you can't zip the ball through zone coverage you have mm-hmm. to be very very accurate and put some touch behind it um, and so again, he's resting on his college r- laurels that are not going to get by in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he threw a pick, right? And four that, sacks. That pick, I think, uh, it he threw it deep because he thought it was a pass. I mean, uh, yeah, the offsides, offsides rule, yeah, right. which didn't get called. Yeah, and that I was totally offsides. Yeah. yeah. So, that totally so offsides. that's I, I don't. That's not, that's not his fault. That's, yeah, not, his fault that's not his fault for the in- interception. Uh, refs, what are you doing? Um, you know, it's, I think it's just going to be one of those work in progress kind of thing for the bears. Um, I was expecting a little bit more from their defense, which was lackluster to say the least. Um, but I mean, it wasn't really lackluster. Aaron Rodgers QB rating was 80, which is not really, 
high for mm-hmm. a player like Aaron Rodgers. Um, they did have to run the ball with – it wasn't like, you know, Aaron Jones had 13 carries for 76 yards. A.J. Mm-hmm. Dillon had 59 yards. So they 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 turned this game. Like they, the Packers didn't come into this game thinking they were going to score 40 points. Right. They knew it was going to be a close game, but they knew that they would have to take care of this ball yeah. and just have the ball – like have the power, you know, the, the lead, and then just – churn it down with Aaron Rodgers and if something were to happen last second they can trust Aaron Rodgers to make it happen but yeah it wasn't like I wouldn't say the Bears played it's, it's, absolutely bad it's in the sense of like the Bears are a better pass defense team than a rush defense team right like mm-hmm. statistics why they're probably average when it comes to rush run uh, running defense and then pass defense is a lot better like top 10 in the, in the league um, so it, it almost seems like Green Bay was going to follow that script of yep, how to beat yeah. them yep. by running the ball. To, you right. Know, and so, I mean, the Bears, uh, Devontae Adams had 89 yards, with no touchdowns. You mm-hmm. know, anytime you stop Devontae Adams from scoring, it's typically a good day. He almost scored. He did. Um, he did almost score. He stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, they forced Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon to beat him, and they beat him. Yeah. They yeah. averaged like 5.8 yards per rush. They were, you know, they were just milking this clock, just yep. churning down. Very un characteristic of the Panthers, but I mean, the Packers, but it just shows that they can adapt to the other team and then still continue to put yep. up points. It, it seemed like the Packers at no point in this game were sweating. Yeah. And the Bears were up 7 nothing to start, but the Packers just played with this sense of like, okay, we know exactly what the blueprint is to beat this team. Mm-hmm. And like we said, they executed it to perfection. I mean, yeah. averaging five yards a carry, Rodgers only had to throw the ball 23 Sorry. times. Yeah, completed 17. Yeah, only had 195 yards, but he still got two touchdowns and ran one in. And like we said, Devontae Adams, yes, he had four catches, but he was also only targeted five times. What's yeah. the last time you saw Devontae Adams only no, targeted five no. times? Yeah, so, the, I mean, the Bears came out doing what they were supposed to do to win this game. Mm-hmm. It just so happens they had to play Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. One thing I wanted to note on the fields thing, that throw that was an interception that obviously was offside that yeah. didn't get called, not his fault. I couldn't really tell, to be honest, if he was trying to throw the ball like away too far or if he was trying to give his guy his chance. Because one, the way he threw that, his guy had no chance. Like he threw it super high in the air yeah. and like way on the side. So the guy ran under it almost like a punt. Yeah. He did that exact same thing later in the game too at, on a non-offsides play. Right. So he needs, I can't tell if he's again trying to throw the ball away past the end zone and just not getting it far enough. But luckily, the Packers guy only ended up getting one foot in bounds, but it was almost identical to what he did there. Right. So, like, that's some awareness that Fields has to recognize that the guys in college probably weren't fast enough to run under that or he, get, he could get away with that. But this, again, is the next level. You can't make stupid mistakes like that. Right. Like, the throw that he made if you didn't realize that it was offside and the second was the same thing, it was literally like he threw a lame duck up into the end zone. I'm like, nobody would do that. Right. So, so little things like that. Obviously he used his feet a little bit better this week. Um, had 43 yards rushing on six attempts. Uh, Bears again, ran the ball. Well, Cleo Herbert looks good. Uh, so whether Damon Williams comes back or not, Herbert looks good. It does. Um, so Herbert, great Khalil Herbert, <laughs> the great Khalil, the great Khalil. <laughs> um, he also caught two passes for 15 yards. Um, but yeah, again, Packers take care of business. Never sweated. Just a recipe for you know typical Packers Bears fashion. Packers dominate this one. Uh, win by 10. They are now five and one, and they are at home to the Washington football team next Dang week. It. So that should be a six and one for them. And the bears probably are going to lose. They're traveling to the bucks next week. So, right. um, let's all see right. what Justin Fields can do against the goat of all goat quarterbacks. Next game on the board is our Minnesota Vikings finally won a game, um, that had some significance to it. They won 34, 28 at the Carolina Panthers. They are now three and three. The Panthers dropped to three and three Vikings covered the one point spread. The over comes in at 46. Um, this game to me, the MVP was Kirk cousins. Yeah. Zero doubt there. Zero the, doubt. the defense played really, really well for a long, long part of this game, mm-hmm. but then somewhere in the fourth quarter, yeah, Patrick Peterson got hurt, right? Yeah, it was pulled right, a hammy. Pulled a hammy right after he was out. It looks like the Panthers were yeah. trying they, to make a comeback. Attacked him. They attacked, attacked Dantzler, DJ Moore, yep. and then Dantzler ended up getting scored on. It was just they just figured it out. They were like, we were suffocating him, dude. They had like seventy some yards or eighty some yards all the way till the third quarter mm-hmm. on offense, like passing offense. That's that's seriously good defense coming from. We have one of the worst cornerbacks, as PFF stated, the worst cornerback. And he got a pick on the first play of the game. Yeah. So Rashad like, Breland. As soon as that happened, I'm like, okay, so the worst person <laughs> on the team is doing good. This uh, should be a good game. Yep. And then, you know, let alone at the end when we, even though we had, you know, the lead, I had a feeling this letting the foot off the pedal shit was going to happen again. And it happened again. 
And they attack Patrick Peterson's area, and now all of a sudden they come back. They fourth and ten, bro, in their own like five yard line. He throw like a forty one yard bomb to Ian right Thomas down the middle. the middle. Right I'm down like, the middle. That is inexcusable. You get the first down, that's fine. Like he gets like seven yards and gets a first down. But a forty one yard play that you let formulate when he's literally in his own end zone. And so, yeah, I mean, there, there's no reason this game should have one gone to overtime, mm-hmm. been as close as it was. Um, but nonetheless, again. Time and time again this season, Kirk Cousins has been put in a situation to give his team an opportunity at the end of the game to tie the game, win the game. Yeah. Um, and he delivered in regulation. Obviously, our kicker missed because what else is fucking new? Uh, and then in overtime, we get the ball back. And that throw, that walk-off touchdown to KZ, KJ Osborne was one of the best throws I've ever seen. That was perfect. Perfect throw. Um, dude, 33 or 48, 373, three touchdowns, zero sacks. That's right. what we needed. What, what have I been saying since like the end of last year? This man is fucking accurate, right? He's clearly accurate. Everything is proven towards his accuracy. No one's doubting the accuracy. It's but he can't move, right? Which clearly he can kind of move now. Dude, that uh, one 16-yard run? Right. I told you about this crucial. in the in the preseason we're like, "Oh, it looks like he's going to start running now." Yeah. And then you know, we like joked about yeah. it, but he's actually taken off. Those are the critical movements that he had never made before, and now he's made. Yep. So, when you have a quarterback with protection who is historically the most accurate player playing in football right now, there is no doubt that that's, that's going to be the problem in the team, right? So we established that, right? If all these other weird things that happened early in the season didn't go as planned, Kirk Cousins would have five game-winning touchdown drives yep. right now. He would be unanimous MVP choice right 100%. now. 100%. So, you know, we figured that out. I am so happy we figured that out. It's like there is zero doubt on that side of the field now. Now the fingers are gut- have to start pointing towards Zimmer for still making these decisions. Dude. For a quarterback to be playing that well and still having to go to overtime – like I yes, the kicker sucks. We need a new kicker. I'm mm-hmm. tired of it. Mm-hmm. We need a new kicker. Yep. It just has to be done. Yep. It can't be worse. No. It can't be worse than this. He's hit game winners, but that still doesn't take away from the fact that he's still missing. Like right. he's missing and putting us in a situation to make the game closer at the end. Right. So yeah, we need to figure this out. If we don't figure out this kicker situation and we need to figure out a new cornerback situation, we're missing a lot of cornerbacks. Don't know what's gonna happen. They're probably gonna get attacked again. Right when we just figured everything out. When everybody was shutting down the receivers, DJ Moore was not having a good day until nope. Patrick Peterson left. Nope. So now we need to figure out this cornerback situation, figure out this kicker situation, going into this bye, coming out of the bye, it should be coming in hot. Yeah, that especially with the kicker situation, it's 28-17. You have a okay. chance to score a 47-yard field goal to make yep. it a yep. two-touchdown game yep. right. um, to make it 31, uh, 31-17, yep. and you miss it. So, you know, those are those are kicks that you need to make um, to close out the games for your team, which they didn't do. So, yes, 100% in agreement. It was like a third and seven. And so most teams, you know how they show the line of like, what's the kicker's range to kick a field yeah. goal, right? Yeah. Most teams will see that and, and be like, okay, let's get let's closer get than that because yeah. that's the absolute minimum. The Minnesota Vikings get to that line, and then it's like, okay, we're going to hand the ball off three times. Right. Third and seven there, if you get a first down, you get closer. If you score a touchdown that drive, the game's over. It is literally absolutely over. The best player on your team is your quarterback right now. Your receivers can't be stopped. If you score a touchdown that drive, the game is over. If you kick a field goal, there's still eight minutes left, and it's two touchdowns. So it's still not over, right? Yes, you're in a way better spot, but a kicker who's that erratic— it's third and seven on a 47-yarder, and you hand the ball off again. And I'm like, dude, Kirk Cousins has shown he's the best player on the team right now. If you give him time, he's literally going to deliver, and our receivers are getting open at will, and you don't throw the ball there. That's Mike fucking Zimmer. It it's is. Mike Zimmer and that mindset, and that put us in the situation where we had to go to overtime, and Kirk once again proved that he can carry the offense if you give him the time of day. And so... How many times are we going to have to see this before Mike Zimmer's like, okay, Kirk, I actually trust you? I don't know. Kirk had to shove him in the shoulder pads or whatever, like last <laughs> Did game. Did you like that? Yeah. And he like shoved him back. Yeah. I think he was just the old man. <laughs> yeah. He was like very startled. <laughs> uh, yeah. But nonetheless, they get the job done. Dalvin Cook, good game, 29 yeah. carries, 140 yards, a touchdown. Adam Thielen, 13 targets, 11 catches, 126 yards, touchdown. He we can was, put uh, it. He was we, stealing it. He was definitely dealing it. We can put it to rest that Adam Thielen is a touchdown or bus guy, or he's too old, or he can't beat his decept- defenders. The Panthers are good defense, and he was open every single play. Justin Jefferson, eight catches, 80 yards, 14 targets his way. So uh, they're seeing the same thing we are on paper, that this guy's the real deal. And K.J. Osborne, man, time and time again, crucial spots, third downs, Dude. need a first down, to walk off touchdown. He's mm-hmm. going to K.J. Osborne, yep. and that dude's lights out. Yep. We, we have a three-headed monster. We, we have all-headed monsters. Besides a cornerback situation, yeah. 
everybody's a monster. Daniel Hunter's a monster. Eric Kendrick's a monster. There's a lot of monsters, and we're just letting the play calling of this team hold us back. Yep. And that needs to change after this bye week. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, lastly, um, you know, credit to the the Vikings uh, on the defensive side and the offensive side. However, the Panthers' offense did also look pretty bad. Sam Darnold, 17 <laughs> for 41, uh, 207 <laughs> yards, one touchdown, one interception. Mm-hmm. Um, looking like uh, the Jets' Sam Darnold and uh, – yeah. You know, they traded for this guy, hoping that they could, you know... He could be the future. He could be the future. I mean, mean, think about this, okay? Kyler Murray had one of his worst games against us. Just eye test bad games. You know, he wasn't having a happy day. So, like Dalvin Cook mentioned the other day, or yesterday at the post-game conference, everybody's like, oh, you guys are going to have to play this schedule. You have the hardest schedule coming up. You got to play this team still left. How are you going to beat that team? He's like, hold up. They also have to play us. Like, why are we getting discounted as, like, this (laughs) shitty team when we are just out here... Scoring points and losing yeah. games because of these intangible, weird things. So, like, you know, I think it, this game just kind of put us in the map because the Panthers had the number one pass defense. We just ran a train on that number one pass defense. So when do we have to start deciding? When do we stop fearing these teams we're playing, and when do the other teams start fearing us? Yeah, and I, and I, and as much as a Vikings fan, I want to start having that mindset, but I think it just it's tr- the trickling down effect of the mindset of the fucking ownership and the head coach, right? It starts with the head coach, obviously. Like, he instills the mindset and, and like, the way his players are going to come to play. Like, do you ever have any doubts that Mike Tomlin's team's going to come to play? Do you ever have any doubts that John Harbaugh's team's going to come to play? Mm-hmm. Like, even in situations where, like, maybe they don't play their best, they came to fucking play. And it's just this fucking sad loser mentality that Mike Zimmer has that I'm sick of because the team has shown that they're capable. Zim just needs to, like, let like unleash the reins and let them fucking do what they can do. Um, so great time to get a bye week for the Vikings. Again, go to three and three after the Owen two start. So we got to be encouraged there because of that gauntlet of a schedule after the bye. the Panthers are three and three heading in the opposite direction again with Sam Darnold CMC on the IR now. So really not a lot to look forward to. The defense is still good. So hopefully they can bounce back because they're going to be at the giants kicking into the next game. The Cincinnati Bengals were at the Detroit Lions. Uh, Detroit Lions still searching for their first victory. It's not going to come here as the Bengals take this one very easily, 34-11. to 11. Bengals cover the 3.5-point spread, and the over-under both push exactly at 45. Bengals are now 4-2. and two. The Lions are 0-6. Oh was Dan Campbell crying after this one, too? He was almost, almost did, yeah. No, he we, did not. We, we were watching for it. He took some moments to be quiet. Oh, my God, Dan. And I think if somebody would ask this <laughs> specific question, he would have started balling. Oh, yeah. Poor guy. But he did throw uh, Jared Goff under the bus. Dude, it was I didn't, bad. I didn't hear. What it was say? bad. Yeah. So he basically said everything without actually saying everything. Yeah. So, yeah, he was like, yeah, he needs to play better. Um, you know, like basically, like, we can't win if you don't play better. And I was, I'm looking at his stats, right? Mm-hmm. They're bad. They're really bad. But they allowed 34 points. You know, like... Right. If you're going to say something about your quarterback, how he needs to step up, then highlight the whole team right yeah. like i mean that shouldn't be what you lead with right i mean like what do you the get team just as needs a to head do co- better. yeah as a head coach literally the staple of the entire offense and the team runs through the quarterback the minute you express any sort of uh questions or doubt to that quarterback uh-huh. imagine the mindset of jared goff now knowing that one he's not playing well two the lines are zero and six and three his head coach <laughs> literally put him under the bus right right and we were talking about that like that's something that I Mike Tomlin probably wouldn't do. Never. Like in the locker room, yeah. like one on one or yeah, whatever, sure. have that conversation. Be heated. Yell at him even. Right. But on at, in a uh, press conference, I don't know if that was the right move. I, I don't mean, I don't think getting this coach was the right move. No. Be clearly, like you're too, way too emotional to be on TV. You're the you're the leader. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. I, I get all about emotions. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But like I get that, right? I get the the intensity you get from having these strong emotions and everything, but what does that what does that look like? You're you're the leader of this organization and instead of saying what you're gonna do to fix these problems, you're like, I love my guys. I just don't want them to be losing anymore. Like what what? Yeah. You're not my mother. Yeah. The players will go home to their mother and they'll tell them that. But you're a leader of the team, the leader, and you're over here throwing people under the bus, like crying on live TV. Like yeah. dude, that is not somebody I want as like a father figure as a player on that team. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, last week. You know, the fact the fact that the situation played out the way it did where he probably felt like he made the biggest risk he had going for two at the end to steal the win because if he doesn't get that, he's an 0-5 coach and everyone's like, oh, you're clearly not the answer, right? So in his eyes, he was like having this roller coaster of yeah. emotion where he was super excited after getting the two only to lose. Yeah. And so 
I'll even just give him the benefit of the doubt that like that situation itself was emotional. But if he's having any sort of sad emotions after losing a game in which they had no shot, like mm-hmm. 34 to 11, you right. were never in the game. So why are you getting emotional? You played bad. You didn't deserve to win. Your quarterback is averaging 4.8 yards a throw. You ran it 18 times for 36 right. yards. So why is this on Jared Goff? Yeah. Yes, Jared Goff is bad. Yes, Jared Goff's not going to turn this Lions team around, but do not. Do that to your starting no. quarterback. Don't you, throw him under the bus, bro. That's awful. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's interesting because, like, la- with that crying, I was like, you know, that's going to rile up these yeah, lines same. and they're going to do at least keep it a competitive game. And, and they didn't. The Bengals came <laughs> to, <laughs> you know, to Detroit and just did what they needed to do to get the win. Joe uh, Mixon had a great day. Yep. 18 carries for 94 yards. He had a great catch. Jamar Chase's block on that catch was yep. probably the top highlight of that play. Um, you know, they came to play. They came to play. The receivers did well. He spread the ball around very well. I think we saw the Bengals at, like, their prime this game. They they probably played, like, the best football they've played. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there was no way the Lions were going to win this game. I'm just very, very shocked that it's come to the point where fingers have to be pointed for these excuses of losses. Yeah, yeah man. At some point, again, if anybody's pointing fingers, a lot of time the fingers get pointed at the head coach. Like you're, you're the staple of the entire team and you're a first year head coach, right? With nothing proven in terms of head coaching, uh, history or past. So, Six games into your first head coaching gig, you're already throwing players under the bus rather than taking ownership for the right. fact that your team is bad. Right. He's not gonna he's not gonna cut it. I'm sorry, but right. that mindset and attitude is not gonna cut it as a head coach. People will see right through that. Um, certainly appreciate your emotions, but dude, yeah. th- if you're getting any emotions over losing 34 to 11 in terms of sadness as opposed to being mad, then there's something wrong. There's something there's something deeper here. Right. The I locker mean- room's like a mess. Like he's clearly not getting his team ready to play like whatever it is it's an issue yeah um real quick just fantasy wise i know we talked about uh mixon mm-hmm. jamar chase for uh catches 97 yards he is the sec he has the second most receiving yards with 553 through the first six games second most by any rookie in the super bowl since era who? Since I would who? Like to hear the goat one. the best receiver of all time number 84 nice. the super freak Superhuman. The guy that has a word, his last name is a word that everybody references in football being an outstanding catch. None other than randy moss i get so fired up hearing that name remember that video that the the yes superman yes bro the kryptonite kryptonite. Kryptonite. down dude that video is you know how like children have bedtime stories (laughs) i used to watch that video (laughs) before going to bed i'm getting goose i'm just thinking about that video man god moss yeah um and then lastly on the line side yeah we talked about how terrible the the (laughs) players were but uh tj hawkinson 11 (laughs) targets uh eight receptions 74 yards so 11 targets um for tight end you know yeah um, so fantasy wise, that is good. And at least Swift gets into the end zone and catches right. like five passes. So he's at least fantasy viable still. Um, so he's doing his thing. Uh, but other than that, there's really nothing to be super excited about with this Lions team. So um, at some point we need to play a game where we go through the Lions schedule and see where there's a possibility they're going to pick up their first victory mm. because the way they've been playing, I don't see it happening. Um, but in any case, the Lions are going to be at the Rams next week. I, I don't think they're going to pick up their first victory there. Yeah. And the Bengals have a tough, tough divisional matchup at the Ravens next week. That should be a good game. The Texans, the one in four Texans, or I'm sorry, the yeah, the one in four Texans were at the one in four Colts this week. Colts finally have a good game. I know it was the Texans, but they dominate this one 31 to three. We talked about the Colts being favored by 10. They covered that with like no problems whatsoever. The under comes in 43 and a half. Um, man, Carson Wentz was absolutely airing it out this game. The most deep throws I've seen from Carson Wentz in a really long time. And it seemed like he had probably like seven to 10 seconds to throw the football. Mm-hmm. There's like not much pressure there. Um, just all around the Colts kind of just had one game that they needed to hopefully bounce back because it didn't seem like there was much sweat there on their end. Yeah. I'm sure Eagles fans are looking at this Carson <laughs> Wentz and thinking, what did we just do? Um, with Jalen Hurts, not producing uh on in four quarters like he should uh, he does come alive in fourth quarter but um yeah no Wentz looks good uh jonathan taylor dude that guy what a luxury right uh 14 carries 145 yards uh he hasn't two even touchdowns. reached his final form 
That's insane. The man's getting 14 carries a game. Yeah. You know, and he's getting not even that many targets, and he's producing 30 points kind of thing for fantasy. In an offense that's like subpar. Yeah, where you know he's getting yeah, the ball. where he's the staple. <laughs> so, like, you know, what's going to happen here? Sky's the limit for that man, man. He's fast. He's strong. He's, like, really, really fucking good. And just under the radar, like, this guy, not on the Colts, this guy on, like, any big team Dude. is probably in contention for top three running back in the league. So, um, he's a beast. He's he a is. beast. We yeah. talked about T.Y. Hilton. Sad story. Mm-hmm. Comes in healthy. Looks really, really dynamic. Like, looked fast. Mm-hmm. Didn't look like he was old, and then he got hurt. Yeah. So, um, that's tough. Texan side, God, I mean, you, you kind of got what you expect from Davis Mills. Like, yes, we've seen flashes in a couple of games, but, like, what are we really expecting is, like, Davis is Davis Mills the future? And, and then at this point, the Texans are in a weird situation, right? You're not good, so you want to tank for the best pick. Tyrod Taylor is now healthy. He's he's, he- he's back in practice soon. Right. Soon. Soon. So wh- where do you go if you're the Texans front office? Do you go with Tyrod, who probably gives you a better chance? It probably helps you win a couple more games. Or do you stick with Davis Mills? Because one, Tyrod Taylor, to no fault of his own, people already like kind of know what they're going to get from him, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. It's like a sad reality. And Davis Mills is a rookie. So you still always hope that there's more in the tank. But at the same time, Davis Mills probably gives you the best chance to get the number one pick. So... If you're the front co- front office or the coach, like if Tyrod Taylor's healthy, is he playing? I think he should. <laughs> I think I think he he definitely should. I mean, yeah. I mean, the the big big benefit of starting Tyrod Taylor is they're still in the shittiest division in football, right? Sure. Right? So there's still 18 games, uh, 17 games, I guess, with the bye. So there's still some hope. You know, mm-hmm. Colts are playing like this. They're still two and four. You know, like there's a lot yeah. of opportunity. There's still a lot of football sure. to be played. At this point, I would probably try to get Tyrod back. But I mean, you know, by week eight. <laughs> If things aren't looking very good, then then we'll talk the T word. Yeah, for I, I hope Tyrell Taylor comes back because then that means m- more Brandon Cooks, right? Who still right. had a decent game? Who had a decent game? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I think it was like eight not, catches, not nine catches, not, nine eight, catches, eighty-nine yards. Yeah, stay a solid PPR day. Right. So, but if Tyrod Taylor's back, then you can expect, um, you know, consistency. Not just, yeah, not just garbage time. He'll get some regular time. Exactly. Well. exactly. Yeah, and again, Carson Carson Wentz like only had 11 completions this yeah, game and he won to 31 to three right 223 yards two touchdowns average throw was 11 yards so jonathan taylor incredibly efficient 10 yards per carry i mean these numbers are insane 10 yards of carry running with your best running back 11 yards of throw with your quarterback i mean how are you going to win a football Those game are first downs every yeah, time you that's a first down play. every touch so i mean the, the the numbers speak for themselves ty four targets man four catches 80 yards that 52-yard bomb was so electric. I was so fired up for him, and, and, and he got hurt. Uh, we talked about Paris Campbell, had that one big, long touchdown. Uh, Michael Pittman only saw three targets, two catches, but I think he's their best receiver right now. Yeah, I mean, he's he's their biggest deep threat as well, mm-hmm. and they had zero reasons to go deep this game. Yeah. So it was just a, it's just a product of gameplay here. I wouldn't freak out about Michael Pittman not doing too well, especially because yeah. now TYs may not be back. Yep. I think uh, – that's, he's still a viable flex starter. Yeah. Ingram on the other side for the Houston Texans got 18 carries, 73 yards. So if somebody had like a weird spot start there because they were forced to, you're not terribly mad about that because yeah. you probably expected worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Davis Mills, man, two interceptions, two sacks, just not all around good. Colts defense take care, takes care of business. They're going to be at the 49ers next week, another weird team, but not a pushover to say the least. So Colts need to get some momentum. Texans headed in the wrong direction. They're going to be at the Cardinals who haven't lost yet. So... Um, that's probably going to be some survivor pick because that's as easy as that gets. Uh, but the Rams, the Rams were at the Giants this week. The Rams dominate this one easily, 38 to 11, cover the nine and a half point spread. The over hits by a half a point. It was 48 and a half, 49 total points. Rams are now five and one. Giants are one and five, headed in opposite directions. <laughs> Giants just don't have anybody healthy. I just feel so yeah, bad for their offense. Really, uh, Daniel Jones showed a lot of promise. Um, early this season right like people just gave him so much shit and he has actually playing pretty well um but you don't have anybody consistently healthy around you your weapons yeah. are all like one game they're in next game they're out two games they're out and then you're just throwing to random guys like Kadarius tony caught a couple of passes and again Dude, looked electric the first drive he had three catches yeah he and was- all those all his catches look like scary when he touches the ball as yeah. the defender yeah. you're like okay this guy's gonna do something crazy but he can't stay healthy yeah he yeah. rolled his ankle um uh, he's probably you know this. <laughs> I was really looking forward to just throwing up as a wide receiver one or a wide receiver two, but that's yeah. going to have to wait a little bit longer because Sterling Shepard's back. Yep. He got 14, 14. targets. Yeah. yeah. You know, 10 receptions, 14 targets. Sterling Shepard was the guy that I had in my team mm-hmm. before I got the Tony experiment. Yep. And Shepard just got hurt. So this, this is going to be a roller coaster of a ride for the rest of the year. 
Uh, but I think Shepard's going to be the benefactor of to get the target situation for sure. Yeah, and, and then um, the Giants' defense not so didn't do so well, but the Rams' offense uh, looks pretty electric. Yeah. Twenty-eight unanswered points in the second quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Stafford balled out. Right, he yeah. had uh, four uh, four touchdowns, including a no looker. Yeah. To Cooper Cup, God, mm-hmm. man, the balls to do that. He's, he's, on the he's field. been doing that his whole career. Yeah. Is that right? He's yeah. been doing that he, since he, the Lions. That days. is, yeah, that is kind of his mo. Like he hasn't done it as well as like Mahomes, so yeah. nobody's heard about it. And yeah. he played on the Lions, who are never relevant. Yeah, but he does do that. Yeah. Is it is it Karate Kid that like they practice with a blindfold on and they like yeah yeah I wonder if like quarterbacks should start doing that like hiking the ball blindfolds on and throwing it deep and you're, you're just hearing the defenders yeah. come yeah that's next level but I I, I I don't think it's I don't think it's as hard as people make it, people make it sound I really don't think it's as hard as people make it sound honestly yeah. because it's your peripherals right you're not blind you yeah. can still see them yep. you're just not looking at them like you know like you're looking at your t- your laptop right now you're now you're looking at me yeah I can see you do that but I'm not looking at you sure. that's that's the that's the key here it's like he knows where the guy's going. Yeah. All, all he needs is like a little shadow. Yeah, no, right? I understand. I, I play point guard a little bit, so you know, I I, can, I get what you're coming from. Okay, okay Karuko. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no looker over here, Mister No Look Passer. <laughs> um, but no, you're right. This is so off topic because we're talking about no lookers. But did you guys see that angle? I saw it on Instagram like earlier this morning of Tyree or of Mahomes' throw to Tyreek this week. There's a, there's a camera angle from somebody who shot it in the stands, mm-hmm. and that is one of the best angles I've ever seen because it shows you the level of difficulty in that throw yeah. and how perfect it was. We'll have to watch it afterwards. But side note, nonetheless, Rams take care of business. Um, yeah, real quick, uh, Devontae Booker. Yep. You know, 12 carries, 41 yards. I think a lot of people started him. Uh, think twice about doing that again. Uh, look at the matchup. This is a de- heavily matchup-dependent team, the Giants are. Uh, if they play against a good team, this is going to be the outcome. If they play against the average team, he might have a good day. So don't just blindly start him because he's a wide res- uh, running back one. Uh, this team is just way too decimated f- for that type of trust. Um, and then on the other end, Daryl Henderson has been balling out he's every single he's week. Fucking um, he got 21 carries, which is you know uh, more than he normally gets, I guess. Um, and he didn't get too many yards, 79 yards, but he got a touchdown. He finds ways to get in the end zone. He got to find. A, he found a way to get in the end zone through the air. He's just getting in the end zone. There is no Sony Michelle experiment here. You can forget about that. He's just here to spell him down. Um, and he got nine carries because they were up so much. But I think Daryl Henderson is going to be an unsung hero for a lot of championship teams. Yeah, yeah. I I really been, have been impressed with him. And again, the Rams don't typically run the ball that many times. And to see him get 20-plus carries, uh, that's, that's a good sight to see. On the receiving end for the Giants, one last note is, um, with all the injuries Dante Pettis played and he saw 11 targets they were down so much that they had to keep throwing so I don't expect that to yeah the, to, to stick especially if these other receivers are healthy but um, nonetheless it's it's just a sad sight for the Giants as a whole you hope they can get some health um, and you hope you know they can get some consistency because right now they're just not fun to watch uh, speaking of teams that have been a struggle to watch this year but you expect them to turn it around. The Chiefs. The Chiefs were at the Washington football team this week. Chiefs came in two and three. Washington also two and three. Two teams that were two and three, but one expected, one not so much. Chiefs take care of this one easily, thirty-one to thirteen. Cover the spread minus six and a half. The under hits at fifty-four and a half. Um, this was a game the Chiefs needed to have. You you wouldn't have expected anything less with yeah. how piss poor we've seen this Washington football team defense. Yeah, they, I, I would make them the worst defense in the football right now. Absolutely agreed. The one the one bonus is yes, the Chiefs offense took care of business, right? Daryl Williams had two touchdowns, Mahomes did his thing. Um, but the Chiefs defense actually for the first time looked yeah. better than absolutely yeah. they got, trash. They got rid of their weaknesses. Yep. Right? Sor- Sorensen got benched. They started uh what's his face? I think he's a rookie, but he was the best graded player on their defense for pro football focus. So the one glaring weakness that anybody even a child could see watching that defense has now gotten removed and it made it a whole heck of a lot better right mm-hmm. so um hopefully that's moving things to come and, and and the chiefs can finally start to get rolling again because that team is electric um but you know, what else did you guys see um i just want to quickly note uh, yeah. kansas city is the sixth team in super bowl era to not have a winning record despite averaging 30 points per game through their first six games of the season. That's how bad their defense was. That's how bad the defense was. And I think they might have made some adjustments, as a good coach should, and they figured it out because the offense is never in question. You know, Mm -hmm. Mahomes has been getting pressured a lot. He's been throwing a lot of picks. A lot of tip ball interceptions. That's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of them are just Tyreek Hill dropping it, honestly. I think three of them are just off of Tyreek Hill's hands. So, and there's a lot of tips going on. So, I would not, I would not use that argument to demean his skill set. Mm-hmm. You know, he's throwing picks, but he's also doing a lot more than just throwing picks. Yep. And I also thought it was funny how James Winston has less picks than 
Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Year. Who would have thought that? Not anybody. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes. Um, lots of batted. Like it, the receivers should catch the ball, and then they, um, they don't, and the ball gets picked off. But there are some times where he tries to uh, to make the extra play. Like he's about to get sacked, and then he throws it yeah. up in the that, air. Yeah. That that probably, if you look at all of his picks, ever, highlights ever. That's probably one of the worst. Three yeah. Picks yeah. He's had. I want to say the ball just like he just lost the ball. Right. Mm-hmm. That is what happened. There was that one, and it. I remember in the beginning of the season, or a couple of games, weeks back against the Ravens. Oh, yeah, we mentioned that That one. bomb to Travis Kelsey that he overthrew. Oh, it wasn't that one. I think he was, like, falling down, and right before he falls down and lands on his knees, he throws the ball, and it gets picked off. Like, uh, that, okay. that, yeah. there's uh, yeah. things like that where, you know, you just, just take the sack. You yeah. know, don't Or throw just it. throw it away. You Here's know, just live to see another day. This is the same argument with the Russell Wilson situation, right? There's reasons why these players are who they are. This is true. Right? And yeah. that is a huge part of what Patrick Mahomes does and why he's a Super Bowl champion. So you get this with that. You know, it's like a package deal almost. Right. No, no one's going to be perfect for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. These are bound to happen. But the fact of the matter is like these things happen and they just disappear quickly. Like it does not stick in the back of neither Patrick Mahomes' head or their coach's head. They're probably still going to be like unleash it whenever you can because of what you can do. So, yeah, I mean, he's not making the best throws. But I think if I were to have a quarterback that can give me that extra 1% chance opportunity to make a play, and he's that good. I'd oh be yeah, like, I'd be like pull the 100%. trigger. Pull the sure. trigger. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. A lot of times we've seen him be able to get away with that. That it didn't hamper the Chiefs, but Chiefs coming into this were two and three, right? So right. turnovers were the biggest reason they're struggling. And it's not even just all him. There's a lot of fumbles by the receivers, like a lot of random shit happening for the yeah. Chiefs. But you expect all this to regress to the mean. Yeah, I am not worried about any of that. Yeah, that they should be fine. Again, Mahomes three ninety seven through the air, two touchdowns. Uh, Daryl Williams had two touchdowns, 62 yards on the ground. It's got 21 carries, so uh, that's fun to see. Only average three yards a carry. Um, but then you have Travis Kelsey doing his thing, 99 yards on eight catches. Tyreek Hill, nine catches, 76 yards and a touchdown. And Demarcus Robinson this week happened to get the other touchdown from Mahomes. But, yeah, I guess, you know, we, we talked about Taylor Heineke. We talked about his tenacity. and We talked about all the things he can do. But yeah. at the end of the day, bottom line, is Taylor Heineke a starting quarterback in the NFL? No. Yeah, I disagree. He's yeah. not. No, not not not, not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. There, there was chances. Maybe Kansas City's defense is just that much better. Mm-hmm. But it's been you know one week difference. Yeah. I still don't want to just say Kansas City's defense is good all of a sudden. Sure. Um. So I think I I need to see t- more of t- uh, Taylor Heineke. This game was just weird because they couldn't establish the run. Uh, they lost Gibson early in the game. Mm-hmm. They were forced to use a little guy in McKissick who did pretty well. Yep. Um. But you know they were playing behind quite often. It was just a weird game. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm not saying Taylor Heineke is like elite level, mm-hmm. but he's better than what the stats show for this game right now. Yeah. Yeah. I. I agree. I agree with that. Um, yeah. It's it just. It sucks because these people that are super talented, like Terry McLaurin, is is getting the short right. end of the stick. Right. With Taylor Heineke struggling, but who are um, their other options? Do we know? Ricky, Ricky Seals, Seals Jones. Jones. No, I mean as far as quarterback goes. Quarterback. Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know if they have some secret backup, like you know, like a Trent Dilfer or like a Ryan Fitzpatrick hanging out back there. You know what's crazy is we can literally. I, I don't think at this point, point you would <laughs> just <laughs> not <laughs> would would bench Heineke. You no. kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. You yeah. let him keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem with their backup is he's another guy who's almost like kind of like Heineke, and it's Kyle Allen. Oh no! So it's like another guy who's like, no. oh, a couple of games showed flashes, but for the most part, you're like, oh, is he the future? So it's tough. I mean, they had their one veteran who's Fitzpatrick, and he's on the IR. So um, unless they look to pick up a quarterback or something, I think they're just going to roll with Heineke. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they probably should. They yeah, probably should. so they're probably going to roll with Heineke. So uh, I don't know what that means for fantasy perspective, but right now the Washington football team, along their entirety of their offense, don't have a lot of viable fantasy players, especially players that you can start confidently week in and week out. So um, tough for them. They're going to be at the Packers next week. Let's hope they can somehow pull Let's an upset. Let's go Washington. Um, and the Chiefs are going to be at the Titans. So we'll see if their defense is really um, improved or not because the Titans' offense should be formidable. And so that takes us into the last undefeated team left in the NFL. The Arizona Cardinals were at the Cleveland Browns. And the Cleveland Browns are who we thought they were, is what I'm going to say, because Poo-poo. they are back to pooping. Now, I know they've had a lot of injuries, but... The Cardinals dominated this game 37 to 14. They're 6 and 0 now. The Browns have dropped to 3 and 3. We when we recorded the preview episode, I remember reading this out and I was like, "Is this right? The Cardinals are 3-point dogs against the Browns." And they won the game 37 to 14. Yeah. That money line, that spread, everything for the Cardinals was probably the easiest money oh, yeah. maybe this whole year that anybody's going to find. I, I absolutely am baffled. 
that they came into this game three-point dogs. Nonetheless, the over also hits. Kyler Murray, four touchdowns. DeAndre Hopkins, two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. It was literally all, all Cardinals and... I mean, the Browns just keep getting kind of hammered yeah, with injuries. Yeah, that's that's the key here. You know, they stay in t on these. Like, the reason for that line was p probably because they just thought they were going to dominate the run because the uh, Cardinals' run's a little suspect. Mm -hmm. And when you have the number one run team coming in, they can manage the clock, keep games close. That w that's why that is kind of explainable. But still, still, mm -hmm. you know, now let's look at let's look at the situation now on. Okay, Nick Chubb question marks. Kareem Hunt, question marks. You got rookie running backs back there, one-year running back back there. OBJ's injured again. Baker Mayfield has one shoulder. <laughs> How? Like, who is going to put this team to win the Super Their Bowl? Their stock I, is completely it's dropping tanking. Right now. It's tanking hard, yeah. and even if they're all healthy, they still don't have any other receivers no. to keep up with teams like the Mahomeses and the Bills. You know, like, I'm not – this isn't a very exciting team for me anymore. Yeah, It, it was same. at one point. Now I'm like, ooh. They're not going to be winning very many games to keep if they, if this is how their roster looks. Their defense is going to have to really, really carry them at this point. I feel like, yeah. And so, in terms of that spread, you know, I I was actually on the side of the Browns, thinking that, um, you know, guys like Jadavian Clowney, Miles Garrett would be able to put a little bit of pass rush to sack um, Kyler Murray, which they both yeah. individually got one sack each. Mm -hmm. um, but it just wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Hopkins. You know, had had an amazing day, two touchdowns. Um, AJ Green as well had a touchdown. Um, so yeah, it just looks like they just don't have as much strength in their defense as we may have thought. And uh, so yeah, I mean, you can beat average teams with this defense. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, like they beat us. You know, we were just stagnant on offense. Right. But when every time Kyler Murray gets the ball, it's either a field goal or a touchdown. Then even if you have a good defense, it's like. It's just going to get worn out. That defense can't stay there forever. You know, yeah. if, if Kyler Murray's on the field all times, the defense is slowly just getting wasted away. And I don't, I don't trust. I still don't trust Baker Mayfield to carry a team. I mean, the the Browns' formula is run the ball, play good defense, and Baker just has to protect. He has to protect the football, right? He has mm -hmm. to limit his mistakes. Well, five sacks, one interception, mm -hmm. two fumbles lost. Yeah. I mean, you can't do that. You're never going to win a football game if you're the quarterback and those are the results around you. So especially now with all these injuries, the running backs are down, receiving cores down. That puts even more pressure on Baker who's playing with one shoulder. So like how how are they going to win? It's a good question. I, it's looking very tough with injuries and uh, Nick Chubb being out, Baker Mayfield question mark. They got the quick turnaround against the Broncos this week. They're at home, but it yeah. is the Broncos. The Broncos defense has shown flashes. They've had a you know weak schedule and they've regressed to the mean. But even a game against the Broncos, I'm questioning how the Browns are going to come out. Yeah, the, Bron the Broncos are one of the best run stopping de defenses. As as big of a fake news as I call the Broncos, the one thing that's not fake about them is their run stopping abilities. Yep. They are pretty good at that. Yeah, and so if. The Browns are predicated on the run. Their running backs are out, so it's going to put pressure on Baker. He does get to attack the one weakness in the Broncos sec or the one weakness in the Broncos defense, which would be their secondary, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, but again, I just don't trust Baker. Yeah, I mean, the the thing is, at this point, you start looking at teams and you're saying, okay, which got what teams can actually make it to the Super Bowl are yeah. actually two contenders, um, at, at, or even just playoffs in general. Um, and the Browns just don't look like that team that when they get to that next level will come out victorious and, and yeah. beat mm -hmm. some of the other teams in the playoffs. Yeah, agreed. Fake news. Fake news. So the Browns are going to be three and throw three. Like I said, they're going to they're going to be home uh, versus the Broncos. So it'll be interesting to see if they can get a win under their gelt, belt being so decimated. The Cardinals should easily go 7-0. and oh. Derek Henry already has a touchdown, by the way. Wow. Well, there goes that. Wait, <laughs> how? No way. That's what it I'm, says. I, oh, I was looking at your screen. It says 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm looking at this screen. It says, oh, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm looking at Hunter Henry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm sorry for just scaring no. both of us I for mean, a second. I mean, I know I'm going to lose, but I was like, okay, this must be on a rewind then because it's zero. I was looking at your screen. I was like, zero, zero. I just saw Henry and I panicked. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I know. You have reason to panic because you should, like, I hope you win yours because you're up like 26. There's no way I'm going to win being up three. Like, I just need to accept defeat. Um but yeah, the, the Cardinals aren't going to lose next week either because they're going to be at home versus the Texans. So the Cardinals are locked to go 7-0. and um, So when's their first loss? That'll be another fun game to play if we check out their schedule. But that takes us to the Raiders. The Raiders and Broncos had a divisional matchup this week, and the Raiders win this one 34-24. The Raiders cover the 3.5-point spread as dogs, and the over 44 hits. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I mean, I don't know. What, what surprised you guys about this game? Yeah, so this is the first game, right, with John Gruden being out yep. um, as the coach. Uh, there's an interim coach. Don't you say it. Don't you mention that one name that I know you're going to mention, bro. What what name is this? I heard you, just, oh. You'll get to it. Okay. Um, but <laughs> I think it's, is it Kenyon Drake? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Kenyan> Drake. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Sorry. So you, you, you dropped Kenyon Drake, right? Yeah, and, yeah. fuck Kenyon Drake. So with this offense, uh, with this new, you know, coach, um, I did read somewhere that Derek Carr will be get, will be more involved in play calling. Okay. Uh, for the, for the next week, um, so I, I I'm I'm not in the position to say what that means, yeah. but I feel like we're gonna have a little bit of you know something different where that benefits fantasy owners, uh, benefits guys that have Josh Jacobs, maybe even Kenyon Drake, because uh, he did score a touchdown this week. He didn't score two, a touchdown. Two, two touchdowns. He scored two fucking one touchdowns. passing, one rushing touchdown. The dude has been useless all season, all season. Your number one running back's hurt. You paid a guy a million dollars. You probably heard this so many times, but I'm gonna repeat it again because it makes no sense. Yeah, dude, listen though. He still was useless. He was actually used less than he was last week. He just happened to get in the end zone twice. So this is an outlier. I am not banking. I'm not running out there picking up Kenyon Drake. You'd be a fool to do that at this point. Four carries and two receptions. That is that is not equal two touchdowns in any form of Kenyon Drake land in any multiverse anywhere. Yeah. I, I'm doing it just to keep him there. Okay. He's just doing it to piss me off at this point. He's like, <laughs> I'm picking up Kenyon Drake. He's like, I might even start him. Gets three yeah, touchdowns yeah, yeah, on four no, carries. No, sure, pick him up. Pick him up. That just means you're going to have to drop somebody and I might pick that guy up. So, yeah, yeah. pick him up. No, just, you know, if I have the room on the bench, I, I don't remember if I do or not, but I'm just going to, just just to monitor him if Josh Jacobs gets Damn. hurt, yeah. then Kenyon Drake should got, get the you start. You got room to monitor people, bro? I'm running out of space in <laughs> those benches. Yeah. Adding like these Tonys that are just not playing and it's just sitting. Dude. Yeah. It just infuriates me that Josh Jacobs finally comes in feeling he like he's a hundred percent healthy, and he still only gets sixteen carries, fifty three yards. Did get in the end zone, but Kenyon Drake gets four carries, and he didn't. I don't even remember him getting a carry early in the season. He was only there for third downs, and even then they weren't throwing him the ball. Right when Josh Jacobs was out, when they had to pick up Peyton Barber and mm-hmm. play him from the street. And they gave him like 25 carries. So, yeah, maybe this is the complete shift since Gruden's gone now. And Carr's like, you know what? We paid this guy a lot of money. Like, I got to use him. No, and they didn't use him. They used him less than we used him last <laughs> so, game. I, I don't know what it is. But nonetheless, Drake gets two touchdowns. Whatever. Uh, Henry Ruggs caught a couple of deep balls. He caught that touchdown as well. Derek Carr, 341 yards, two touchdowns. Looked really, really good. Teddy Bridgewater had to do a lot of throwing on the other side. 334, three touchdowns. I mean, yeah. uncanny for Teddy B to have three interceptions. Yeah, Teddy's just not a comeback kind of guy. No, like, it's tough. You know, he's not built like that. He's a very good game manager. He yep. could just keep everybody in games. That's why Mike Zimmer loved him so much. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's not he's not going to come from behind like 28 points to beat somebody. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, and the Broncos running game. I mean, you had 11 carries for Javante Williams, 10 carries for Melvin Gordon. They, they were down a lot, so probably couldn't really establish the run. Noah Fant, great game. 11 targets, 9 catches, 97 yards, wow, and a touchdown. I had no idea he had 9 receptions. Yeah, I played against that fucker. Cortland Sutton, 8 catches, 94 yards, and a touchdown. And Tim Patrick, Tim Patrick, 42 yards, and a touchdown. I know you mentioned Tim Patrick a couple times on the podcast. Yeah. Um, he's getting somewhat, you know. Well, in- Judy's out. Yeah. So th- he's been a beneficiary of that. Now that Judy looks like he's in practice, and so, you know, you, I, you would assume that Tim Patrick's role um starts going down after judy's back do do we know tim patrick's size when he caught a pass last week i thought he was a tight end yeah he's, he's oh, huge he's right huge. Yeah. he's really fast too yeah so i uh, so he's even six if four, six four two twelve even if judy's back yeah. like tim patrick seems like he has a lot of intangibles that you can't you can't yeah. teach six four yeah you can't teach that size what's sutton is he like six two is he if he seems like a six two guy the, the thing is, like... Sutton 6'4 as well. Oh, my God. Their receivers are huge. <laughs> Why are they not... I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense that this year we've seen Teddy throw the ball downfield a lot more than we've traditionally seen him do it. Makes sense. But I'm hoping that with Jerry Judy back, Tim Patrick is still utilized because it seems like there's a lot of upside to how he plays. Yeah, it's just the fact that they run so much. It's just not enough stuff to be spread out. Like right. no, There's no way Fant, Sutton, Patrick, and Judy are going to get 10 targets each. Yeah. yeah. but I'm, I'm just not as confident if Judy's back to start. Like I've been starting Tim Patrick ever since Judy's been out and mm-hmm. he's been giving me either the, uh, you know, catches or, or a touchdown. Um, so to get the points from in PPR. Um, but now with Judy, when Judy comes back, I'm not as confident in starting him. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see because the Broncos are going to be at the Browns next week. We already talked about their woes. So we'll see which team can kind of get on track as they're both three and three the Raiders are now four and two and they're hosting the Eagles next week who have a slew of issues themselves so maybe the Raiders can pick up some more momentum and look like the early season Raiders um what were you gonna say 
Oh, no, I'm just excited that the Bills are kicking a field goal. Damn, I think I I'm playing against Tyler Bass. I don't remember the last time I saw the Bills kick a field goal. So the Bills are up 3 nothing with six minutes left in the first quarter? Yeah, let me tell you what happened. So Derrick Henry got the ball first. He only got .1 points yes. that drive. I'm still alive. Wow. You are. So he only got point, And then they milked the whole half of the quarter and then kicked a field goal, which is my kicker. And then now he gets the ball back with like less than half of the quarter left. Come on, so man. So let's get one more three and out stop yeah, and then dude. another same thing again. And then it's the end of the first quarter. Henry has less than a point. Yeah. yeah. And they just start airing out. Yeah. And then they're down a bunch and then they just have to throw. The McNichol show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We can dream. We can dream. Yeah. Um, that takes us to the second to last matchup on the board. The Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys, the impressive Dallas Cowboys traveled to Foxborough to take on the New England Patriots. Cowboys win this one in overtime. What a freaking game. 35-29 final. Cowboys cover the three and a half point spread. The over comes in at 50 and a half. Cowboys are now five and one heading into the bye week. They look freaking scary. Gallup's coming back. Um, sky's the limit for that team. The Patriots are now two and four. They're going to travel. Or they're going to be at home against the Jets, so they can probably get back to their winning ways. But let's talk about the Cowboys. Yeah, they started off slow, right? They started off really slow. Uh, I think that they were the, down fourteen to yeah, seven. Fourteen to seven in the first quarter, and had a fumble in the uh, in, in the goal line. Uh, I think. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott yep. tried to run it in, and, and there was a fumble called. Uh, so it started off slow, but then it definitely started picking up after the um, the second half. Um, wild ending. Dude. That's, that ending was insane. <laughs> Absolutely wild. When we saw Diggs get that interception and, and run it in for the touchdown, I thought the game was over then. Sam. And then 75-yard bomb. Nice yeah. play. Who was guarding the guy? Diggs. Diggs. But I, I don't I don't fault Diggs. Yeah, no, the safety really. made one of the worst plays yeah. I've ever seen. That was like a classic Madden noob. Yeah. That was a classic <laughs> yeah. Madden noob play. Classic Madden. You press the triangle button and nothing happens yeah. and you just run forward. Yeah. 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 Um, he saw Diggs going to intercept. He's like, I want one too. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, just ran it too fast. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, they score. They go up. Cowboys come right back, kick a field goal, go into overtime. And then you have... You have what? The Patriots get the ball first and they punt. Mm -hmm. And the the reason this is funny is I had a lot of buddies at work today talk about how they had the Cowboys spread and they're like, okay, they're getting the ball back in overtime. So that means they're just going to need to kick a field goal to win. Wouldn't you know it? CD fucking Lamb, who had in a phenomenal game, yeah. catches that ball like the five yard line, walks into the end zone for five yards while waving at the defender. I mean, that's as much disrespect as disrespect comes, but he had every room to talk shit. Nine catches, 49 yards, two touchdowns. He was unstoppable. 149 yards. 100, did I say 49? Yeah, 149 yards, yeah. two touchdowns. The scariest part about all of this is Dallas, one week, destroys you by running the ball. One week, Dak scary. Prescott throws for 445 yards. Like, how do you game plan for this? You what do you try to stop now? What are we stopping here to beat the Cowboys? I'm officially scared of the Dallas Cowboys, and that's just a shitty feeling. Yeah, I am definitely scared. I have been scared of the Cowboys just because of that first week. You know, you I didn't even expect a game like that to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, man, like they, this is like, if, if I'm jealous of a team right now, it is definitely the Dallas Cowboys. 100%. They have, you know, studs on defense now, you know, they're allowing 29 points and winning the games. Like this is what the Vikings can't do. Uh, we have to score like 30 plus to win every game. Uh, and they're doing the same thing, but they're actually coming out with victorious and we're not, we're on the other end of that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's magical almost because it's like, it's the Dallas Cowboys, right? So you expect things to go wrong, Yep. but like none of that is happening. Nope. None of that's happening. Yeah, that's interesting. It's like when you start thinking of teams, you're like, okay, that team likes to run the ball a lot. Mm -hmm. That team likes to pass the ball a lot. And then you have the Dallas Cowboys that just yeah. are lights out. They can often. do anything every week. Yeah. Any week they can do anything. Yeah. Zeke only had 17 carries for 69 yards this game. Pollard, 10 for 41. And like you mentioned, 445 through the air for Dak. 445, zero sacks. Zero sacks, 445, had an interception. Who cares? C.D. Lamb, 11 targets, 9 for 149 and two touchdowns. I think he's emerged as the clear-cut number one on this yeah, team. Yeah, he should be. Yeah, he's as soon as uh, Cooper got hurt that week one at the end of the game or whatever, immediately C.D. Lamb's stock went up because Cooper's got a hamstring problem. It's just like a receiver that runs full speed for deep route touchdowns every game mm -hmm. We're having leg issues. Like, you're just – it's not going to cut it. Nope. Like, you know, and then C.D. Lamb is young. He's youthful. He's runs fast. He can do anything a receiver can do. He's kind of like a Justin Jefferson on this team. So, you know, it's it's easy. Like, I, I was telling some people to go get him now because their best option outside of Cooper is Schultz. And if you need third downs, Schultz will be the guy. But if you need to extend the field, it is only CeeDee Lamb at this point. And Wilson comes in. Judy. 
There was a catch by Wilson that was the sideline. That was one of the most impressive. Yeah. Ca- I yeah. was not yeah. expecting that. Yeah, me neither. Why That's, has that guy been on the shelf for so long? It's like the KJ Osborne thing. Yeah. These thirds, like you have to have, you got to be the ones to have a solid third wide receiver. And they got Gallup coming back, so they have fucking four guys now. Yeah, yeah. And Jar or Dalton Schultz still had a good game, seventy nine yards on five catches. Like he's still doing his thing over the middle. Dude, this team can beat you every yeah. which way. It's, scary. it's terrifying. It's the defense. It's the defense. You're gonna have to kind of manipulate. Yeah, yeah. That's the only way right now because you're not gonna stop this offense. It's right, just not happening. Right, and and I don't know. What, what? Yeah, anything you saw specifically from the Patriots side of things? Yeah, the Patriots. Uh, I I mean, is it safe to say that they're a run first team? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Sure. Uh, 18, yeah. 18 carries, hundred one yards, one touchdown by Damian Harris. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson. Five carries, 23 yards, but also got a touchdown. And you also saw him in the uh, receiving um, you know, part of the game. Three receptions, 39 yards. So Ramondre Stevenson, uh, some guy, you know, a guy you want to look at, potentially pick up on the waivers mm-hmm. this week um, and with, with Harris's. Uh, he's got some injury issues. He's got some nagging thing, Nag- right? But he's still playing through it. Who, who are you talking about? Damon, Damon Harris. Harris. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I actually forget exactly what the injury was. But yeah, he's yeah, pl- it's, been, it's it. been nagging. He's playing through it, and he's had a great game. But yeah. definitely, they, it clearly seems like they like to use Ramondre, Ramondre Stevenson. Right. And the Pats are notorious for like whoever their running running back is. They always want to have a pass catching guy, regardless mm-hmm. of if the same one guy can do both. And Ramondre catching three kept three passes for thirty nine yards is encouraging. So, um, yeah, definitely something to look at. Mac Jones didn't have a terrible game. Like I thought, he he's doing exactly what Mac Jones does, which is being accurate, yeah. Yeah. getting the ball out quickly. Only threw it twenty one times, two twenty nine touchdown. Did have an interception, got sacked twice, but again, he's playing. He seems like he's been the most consistent rookie quarterback so far this year. For sure, it's not like the consistency is like amazing or even great or good, but it's it it's been encouraging i guess maybe would be the right word he's actually not he's also not had to do as much work as like uh guys like zach wilson guys like trevor lawrence where they have to just air the ball out like have like 30 to 40 attempts a game i I don't yeah patriots defense is top five defense right you know they keep everybody in the game so the quarterback can have a like a nice long day where he doesn't he threw for 21 yards i mean 21 attempts yeah 21 attempts do you think ever you're going to see a game for Zach Wilson for the rest of this year where he only throws for 21 <laughs> no. times. You have to throw for like 51 times. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, again, I, I still like what I see from Mac Jones. Again, Kendrick Bourne had that 175 yard bomb. Hunter Henry got the other touchdown. That's your Henry you were talking about. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> um, which I think the Titans punted. Yeah, it was actually really funny, but I'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Okay. So um, nonetheless, the Cowboys are now 5 and 1, scary as shit, heading into a bye, just resting more of their guys, just refreshed. Um, and come out of the bye facing the Vikings. So on Halloween, might I ask, oh on Sunday God, night football. It's about to be a freaky night. I'm going to be flying back that day from New York, so we'll have to figure out a way to watch that somewhere. Yeah. Because we can't miss that one um, in terms of like not being together to watch it. But that takes us into Sunday night football, the last game on the slate, not counting Monday night that's going on right now. The Seahawks were at Chauvet's Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers win this thriller 23-20 to final. Seahawks cover the five-point underdog spread, and the over comes in by .5, 42.5, 43 total points. Shove it, what did you see from your Steelers? Man, I saw, you know, Deontay Johnson just getting the bulk load of the throws um to him like it just it was just only Deontay Johnson yep. at, at some point uh Najee Harris also you know um looked looked good as a, as always right um my biggest thing is Big Ben is still not as good as he needs to be for this team he's still not looking as accurate um and the reason we won this game is because of one guy and one guy yep TJ Watt. Yep. Yeah, buddy. What a beast. I mean, he was everywhere. Dude, he was. two sacks, three tackles for losses, two QB hits, seven tackles, six of them solo. Right. I'll give you Dalvin Cook and Thielen for TJ Watt. <laughs> wow, I don't think I would do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't do that as a Steeler. Yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, that but that's how valuable he in, is. in overtime, you know, t- uh, Geno Smith breaks away from the uh, from the from the the line i guess mm-hmm. and then you know starts running it yeah um towards the middle of the field and here dude, comes tj watt dude, out of it's, nowhere it's crazy he was triple teamed on the right side he was mm-hmm. already in the backfield yeah and he saw geno <laughs> smith running and he just freak. said fuck this and he yeah. just aborted mission dude, and started running freak, and he got the ball out like it's crazy and dude. and the past deflections that he was three having, of them three of them throughout the game one of them in the fourth quarter should have been an interception oh man there were so many yeah. that were so close I know. um God. 
they, yeah, but that defense, uh, Cam Hayward also step, stepping up. Yep. Uh, Alex Highsmith, uh, guys in those defensive line. Um, Minka Fitzpatrick had nine tackles. You know, Minka Fitzpatrick, PFF, had him as like the hun- second worst safety. Yeah, second worst safety. PFF. So there, obviously, people put a lot of credibility and stock into PFF, but sometimes I've also seen outliers where like what you see on the eye test and the grade is like so different. That's what I was telling him last night. Yeah, this is this would probably be a good example of that because maybe coverage wise, there were some balls in his area that were caught, so it just hinders him or something. But dude, give me Minka Fitzpatrick on my team all day long. Yeah, for sure. But Minka is also on that. He's like. He's closer to the Trayvon Diggs situation than he is to like, let's say like a, like a the Honey Badger situation. Jalen Ramsey, right? Yeah, right yeah. Like they're ball hawks. Yeah. Like their goal is to get the ball. Mm-hmm. So like that comes with a lot of sacrifice as far as like allowing yeah. certain sure. things to happen. Yeah. yeah. So that may be like it depends on the PFF statistics. Yeah. What there's what they're actually using, but I have I'm I'm gonna be open and say it like I don't even look at the PFF statistics because like I I disagree with so much they have to say, and at that point I'm like. You know, I trust myself more than I trust a bunch of numbers. So it's like, yeah, I, I wouldn't th- look right. too much into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and another thing, I've been talking a lot about this person, Pat Fryer Moot. Yeah, baby, baby Gronk. Seven receptions, 58 yards. Love to see it. It sucks that Ebron basically vultured him. Dude, like, <laughs> get, get, get Ebron out of the league. Man. Yeah. Give free Fryer Fry- Moot. He, he needs to be running every. Rest- uh, Tight end tight route. End, right. yeah. And I just love how fired up he gets after every catch too, man. Like, I just love guys that show emotion. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a beast. Uh, they need to keep giving him the ball, give him more opportunities. And and, and they did, right? Two, uh, two receptions and 10 yards. That's, the, that's all uh, Ebron had. Yep. Um, so slowly but surely, it's going to start becoming a fire mood show. Um, so look out for that guy. Yeah. Geno Smith, again, the, the Steelers defense was great. Smith was sacked five times. I mean, he didn't. Turn the ball over yeah, from an interception. He was close to one hundred percent QB rating. Yeah, he, I mean he he lost the fumble, right? Yeah, he had the fumble loss. He didn't he didn't throw an interception. He was sacked five times. Um, but you have to be happy if you're the Seahawks with Geno's play because, yes, I started the Seah- uh, I started Pittsburgh's defense and I was expecting Geno to throw like three four picks, but um, for the most part he did okay. I just wish he would have tried to get his receivers more involved. You know put the ball in a situation where they can actually make plays. I mean, DK had seven targets, six catches, 58 yards. Lockett had seven targets, but only two catches, 35 yards. So the ball's not getting to where typically Russell Wilson obviously would put it. Alex Collins was a bright spot though. Ran for over a hundred yards, had a touchdown and now he's, he's banged up. Yeah, he's banged up, but I, it's not like a sprain or strain. Yep. I think it's just like a football thing. He looked, back. he looked good. He, he did. did. He's quick. Yeah, he's he making did. some he's quick. He uh, jukes and, and things like that that make him look like He's a viable start yeah, yeah. if he's healthy. For yeah. sure. We talked about it earlier. Rashad Penny's going to be back next week, so yeah. um, that should probably take away carries from Alex Collins, unfortunately. Um, but that's something to watch out for. But otherwise, the Steelers take care of business, head into the bye like the Vikings, 3-3, three and three, right? You get back to 500, get your guys healthy, and then come out with you know, fucking fresh legs and, and ready to go. Uh, Big Ben needs it. Yeah, Big Ben could use some rest. The Seahawks are going to be at home to the Saints next week. So, um, again, another not-so-easy uh, matchup for them and that's the last game that's the last game on the board again another fun freaking sunday of football week six wraps up here with this monday night game which again is three nothing buffalo right now with, dude there's some crazy shit happening right now god damn it we need to watch that game so let's 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 kick it with the final segment or i guess two more segments of the second segment second to last segment is going to be the fantasy stud and dud we'll each give you one fantasy stud and one fantasy dud for this week uh show I'll, I'll let you start this week Okay, uh, my fantasy stud this week is going to be Jonathan Taylor. Um, he's finally getting what I expected of him at that draft position. Mm-hmm. Um, and the scary thing is he gets half the targets that or half the touches like players like Derek Hundry and them are getting. Yep. So extrapolating the data, that's like 60 points a week. Obviously, that's not attainable, but mm-hmm. that is somebody you want on your team because of the possibilities. Um, the dud of the week is Justin – oh, sorry, um, Antonio Gibson. Yeah. Antonio Gibson's a huge dud. He's probably the biggest dud after Miles Sanders for me. Uh, Antonio Gibson has been just wasted. He's he's ruining everybody's early picks mm-hmm. in the draft. He was probably people's first running back, second running back. Yep. And he doesn't even look like the best running back on the team right now, even when he's healthy. So it's a little scary. It's a little scary. He, he would be a solid, solid complimentary back to somebody else. But right now, if you're dropping passes at the end zone that are possible touchdowns, and you're just not going to be on the field enough. Yep. I cannot be happy about this as a guy that drafted you as my first running back. So for that reason, Antonio Gibson, you're my dud. Yeah, I like that. Shovit, what about you? 
Yeah, so my stud uh, this week is we just talked about him, Mr. C.D. Lamb. Not floppy disk? Not floppy disk. Right, damn. Yeah, C.D. <laughs> uh, nine uh, catches, 149 yards, two touchdowns, which equals to 36.1 fantasy points. Was that in Was that in one-point PPR that you found that? I believe so. Okay, because I looked it up, and he's 31.6 and half point. But oh, okay. he's still the highest-scoring player this week. Okay, yeah, highest-scoring point. You get the stud, C.D. Lamb. Um, yeah, so... That's my stud. Uh, my dud is going to be the Broncos defense. Uh, and the reason is he, they had a negative two fantasy points, um, 34 points allowed. And they're in, in the first six weeks, they've been ranked seven. So uh, fake news Broncos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were, points. they were at home, right? Broncos were at home. Um, I don't know. Home field advantage, a uh, mile high. You expect just better. It's almost like home field advantage doesn't exist as much as you used to, I feel like. Think like so? Dude, not for us. Dude. Not for the Vikings. That's yeah. the whole chance. In the in- have, have when you s- you're inside, bro, yeah. it's a whole new ball. Have game. you seen during the, uh, like, not during the play, but, like, all the non-play stuff? Kirk Cousins' hands are on his ears all the time. Oh, wow. During, during away hear, games because yeah. he can't yeah. hear. Yeah. yeah. But, like, teams like uh, Patriots yeah. haven't won a game at home yet. Yeah. Uh, Gillette Stadium, you would think yeah. that's a You would think. Home. But uh, I'd like to know the statistic on that. Maybe I'll, I'll look that up. Yeah, I'll get back to you guys on that. that. But we'll, I don't think there's home field. Let's take a guess. I bet it's close to 50. I, mean, I, be, that, I, <laughs> I bet it's more. Yeah. You I bet would, you think you're getting more benefit. I would say it's closer to, like, 60%. 60 percent means that there's home field advantage i, I think it's 60 I, you think it's 60 close to 60 uh, I'll, I'll get back to you guys on that no, yeah. tune me, in for give me a number give me a number no like uh, what, what, I, guess? what i think yeah. it is um oh, i'm gonna say 44 okay wow that's a very uh opposite areas we're going here yeah 44 percent home okay. field advantage okay yeah that let's <laughs> we'll, we'll keep you guys updated on what we find out there um my final stud and dud my fantasy stud is none other than captain kirk himself kirk cousins 28.52 fantasy points led all quarterbacks this week. That's right. Every single quarterback this week scored less points than Kirk Cousins. The dude absolutely balled out. Walk-off touchdown dotted to KJ Osborne. Right now with the line, no pressures. He's, I mean, there's not a more accurate quarterback in the league. The stats prove that. And again, he is now becoming who is a free agent in most fantasy football leagues, right? I don't even think he's rostered in most fantasy football leagues. And I talked about last week how there's guys who are free agents who should be started over like a, uh, Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. And this week, if you somehow picked up Kirk Cousins and thought he was a start... He you know it. you know what they say about Kirk Cousins, right? What? You don't give... Well, you don't give Aaron Rodgers the ball with 49 seconds left in the game. Yeah. You also don't give Kirk Cousins the ball with 49 with 37 seconds left. Seconds left oh, 37. It was less. Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, dude, he's proven this year time and time again that situationally he's put the Vikings in positions to win and they've lost for every other reason outside of Kirk Cousins. So he's been like the lone, uh, I, I'd say he's been the one can most consistent bright spot in our team so far. Yeah, he's been a pure leader. This yep. is what you want from your leader. Also, if you were to told me we were going to have this conversation at week one, I would just not even believe it. Yeah, hundred percent. And and again, we didn't. I don't think we talked about it. But Christian Darrisaw was their rookie left tackle. He started for the first game this uh, of his season, eighty six snaps, only one QB pressure. I mean, that's what you want from your tackle. Right. Yeah. And that was the Panthers D line. Right. So, um, credit to Kirk Cousins. He absolutely deserved it. He is my stud. My dud is none other than Herbie Herbert. Justin Herbert this week. Um, just piss poor, man. Just piss, piss poor. Incredibly inaccurate. Four down throws that just are nowhere near the receiver. Like, give your guys a chance. You have so many weapons. Um, big game against the Ravens. A big, you know, chance to make a statement and be like, hey, we are the real deal. Um, and he didn't. He, he did everything beyond that. I mean, only 11 fantasy points, threw an interception. Again, was so inaccurate. And because of that, none of the people around him were, were able to have good Benefit games either. So yeah. it was just a brutal, brutal, brutal game for Justin Herbert. Hopefully it's an outlier and, um, you know, that's not what we see moving forward, but that's going to be my dud this week. And that wraps up fantasy stud and dud. Last thing we want to talk to you guys about, we've already touched on a lot of these guys. Uh, just want to hit on some waiver wire pickups. Cause that is very, very important with all these injuries going on. Um, show it. Who is there anybody on here that you want to highlight that we haven't already talked about? I think we definitely need to talk about JD McKissick. We've talked about him, but it, it just needs to be highlighted because Antonio Gibson is just not cutting it. And he is being, 100% vultured uh, by J.D. McKissick in the running game and in the passing game. So definitely need to go out there and make that um, make that call um, to pick him up. We talked about Ramondre Stevenson for the Patriots. Um, also, Michael Carter for the Jets, Jets. running mm-hmm. back, right? If he's not already rostered. Yeah. Which, not, he's their starter, so he should already be rostered. But if he's not, because he's not getting many carries, mm-hmm. you got to have starting running backs on your roster. 
Another guy to look at um, for the Browns, uh, back-to-back touchdown game, Donovan Peoples-Jones. Yep. Uh, sorry, Peoples-Jones. Uh, <laughs> with OBJ not really doing so well, mm-hmm. um, he's having drops, yep. right? Uh, he, he did see some targets this week. But yeah, he caught some passes. He caught some passes, but, you know, when Peoples-Jones gets two touchdowns yeah. and OBJ doesn't get that, then, you know, definitely needs to get looked at. Uh, no, and a streaming defense option that we have here is the Jets defense against the Patriots. Uh, Patriots defense, um, you know, they let the Cowboys they, they have uh, 34 points. Um, so if you need someone to stream, you know, Jets defense may be, the, may be who you stream. Um, next, the Dearness Johnson. We talked about Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb getting hurt. Um, so the next in line after uh, Nick Chubb, given that Kareem Hunt is out for next month, is Dearness Johnson. Yes, um, so just to clear things up for everybody that doesn't really get this running back situation here, there's Felton. He was a wide receiver in college. Mm-hmm. who's turned into a running back, but he actually has not had many rushes this year. Um, Dearness Johnson has run the game, uh, run the ball last year, so it would make sense for Dearness Johnson to take the Kareem, uh, sorry, the Nick Chubb role, mm-hmm. and then the other guy, Felton, to take the Hunt, Hunt. role. Yeah. Got it. Um, next up, uh, Ricky Seals Jones scored a touchdown this week. Uh, given that Logan Thomas is out, um, he is a solid pickup. Uh, Logan Thomas, I believe, is out for another month. He's been placed on the IR. Okay. Um, so uh, if you need a tight end, that, there, there you go. Uh, I've got Henry Ruggs as well because he's a deep bomb threat. You need some streaming option. Bye weeks are coming up. Put in Henry Ruggs on your uh, on yeah. your lineup, uh, and you know. Uh, play around with your starting receivers if you need him as a flex um qbs so three qbs to look at this week ryan Tannehill versus the chiefs uh the chiefs did look like a pretty decent defense this week but uh you know that's just one game and we'll need to see more for to consistently say and, that and chiefs people play. with these bye weeks for their quarterbacks a lot of people don't have two quarterbacks yep so you're kind of desperate anyways um so, and, you know, Tannehill, I'm watching the game over here right now. He just threw a pick. <laughs> but, um, Ooh. yeah, yeah. But it, it was actually a Bill's terrible defense. throw. Yeah, it was a bad throw. Oh, but, um, yeah, I mean, regardless, Chiefs defense, the sample size points towards allowing quarterbacks to, I think I mentioned a stat last yeah. week, like they've allowed four touchdowns or three touchdowns to every quarterback so far. So, Tannehill's not like the bottom of the barrel, you know. He's, he's above those. Those He's better than peels. Heineke. He's better than yeah. Heineke. And um, A.J. Brown should be healthy next week, mm-hmm. and Julio Jones is healthy. So all signs point towards if you were to take a risk on a player, if you had to take a risk, Tannehill could be that option. Yeah, this isn't in any particular order, but we do also have Tua. Uh, I'm going to mess up his last name. Tago. Tagovailoa. Tagovailoa? <laughs> yeah. Tagovailoa. Tagovailoa. That's yep. a fun name. Uh, against the Falcons. Yeah, that that's that's the one that you definitely, if he's available, you need to go and grab him. Um, he's he's looking at Gesicki. He's looking at Waddle. And he also you can do it with his legs. So, although, you he's know. not looking at Gaskin? Uh, unfortunately <laughs> not. You know. Yeah, unfortunately not. So, you know, Tua is someone that you need to uh, potentially, if you need a quarterback, that's that's your streaming option there. And then last but not least, Derek Carr against the Eagles. Um, the Eagles defense has not looked good outside of the Carolina Panthers game. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Tom Brady, two touchdowns last game against the Eagles. Uh, that um, Well, they also did run the ball a lot too. Yeah. Um, so Derek Carr against the Eagles, with the way that Derek Carr performed last weekend, with the off- if they can get the offense rolling, that would also be a potential streaming start. Yeah, and he's, again, based on what you said that had, they talked about, is right. he's getting more control of the offense. Exactly. So hopefully that's beneficial to Derek Carr. And the reason we bring up these quarterbacks is, again, on every any given week, you wouldn't be starting most of these guys, but you have Josh Allen on a bye, you have Dak Prescott on a bye, you have Kirk Cousins on a bye, Big Ben's on a bye, Justin Herbert's on a bye, and Trevor Lawrence is on a bye, right? So four of those six guys are probably fantasy starters for most weeks. So um, definitely some streaming options there for quarterback. That wraps up the waiver wire pickups. Uh, Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode 12 as we recapped week six and uh, we get to enjoy some of the end of this Monday night football game. Last thing, again, like we mentioned at the top of the show, the next three people to subscribe to our YouTube channel, the only playbook after listening to this, will be sent a Starbucks gift card as a way to thank you guys for all the support we've gotten thus far. And we certainly want more of that and encourage more of that. If you do subscribe, immediately DM us on Twitter at only playbook or on Instagram at the only playbook, and we can get you um, that gift card. So again, thank you guys so much for all the support. Uh, can't wait, but can't wait to be back here on Friday this week. We'll be back on Friday, right after Thursday night football on Thursday. Uh, we're the only playbook. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.